This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia and we're just adjusting the camera now guys. I think what's happened this morning is that um, we're just going to zoom out a bit here. Last year we started at 8am. This year we had amazing goals of starting for you at 7am because we had so many interviews for you to get through and unfortunately the stream has just not worked until now. Go technology. Hello, Nigel. Winners in 1966, Grinners in 2016. That's Nigel Stoke from Fidelis. We'll be talking to him very, very shortly. I'm uh, now going to hug uh, John Bacon. You need, because a, you need a hug, darling. I need a hug. I've been John. watching you. You're so cool <laughs> through the technology. Thank you. John yeah. Bacon has been sitting here with me this entire time. His interview was first up. And sadly, you're the crash test dummy, and you got to see me at my best. Oh, you're fantastic. Slash worse. Yeah, very well, very well done. I tell you, I felt for you. I felt your pain. We all know what technology is like. Yeah. Oh my Congratulations, Danny. You nailed it. Thank you so much. We're going to probably be running through guys now all the way to, till midday because we have so much going on. Now, John, yes. let's get to what's what we're here for: the Rolex Sydney Hobart for 2016. John Bacon, you're going south on Charlotte. Charlotte. Tell what, me all about it. What a beautiful boat. I mean. It it just is the most privileged ride to have in the world to go south on. I mean, the boat is beautiful. 76 foot CMB super yacht, magnificent owner, owner, great bunch of guys and girls to go south with. I'm so looking forward to it. Oh and what a forecast. What a forecast. You guys are going to have such a great time because it's a beautiful boat. You're doing it in luxury, but oh my gosh. I think everybody that saw Charlotte at Hamilton Island just thought it was fantastic. Guys, you should check out the photos on my Facebook page. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, she's a beautiful boat, but I, but I can't tell you the, the difference in the boat between Hamilton Island and now. Because I mean, you've changed it completely over Well, yeah. it's just getting a boat like that ready to do the Hobart. Yeah. I mean, the boat's probably more at home in the Whitsundays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's probably got a lot more gear off it. We've had sure. to protect it. I mean, we've got a fantastic owner, and it is a beautiful boat, and our priority is looking after it. <laughs> I mean, it is just beautiful, and if you came and had a look at it now inside, you know, we've got it all taped up and looking just, oh, wow. you know, not itself. But uh, <laughs> I have to hand it over. And, I mean, to let us take that boat 600 and something miles just to uh, Hobart with any weather conditions that we could have had, just amazing guy, really good. Yeah, it sounds like, though, that Erwin is just really adventurous. Like, he likes to have a go. Oh, yeah, he's a great guy. I mean, yeah. he's a really experienced sailor. Um, you know, he's not the youngest guy in the fleet. Yeah. And uh, But uh, what, he, what he doesn't have physically makes up with... Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's a pretty cunning sailor, and, you know, we don't get away with anything. Oh, my God. You gosh. know, like, he's there, and uh, he knows the boat really well. And, you're, and, and this one, for, for you, well, for those who don't know, John Bacon's a fantastic sailor himself, MC38. Yeah. Recently done the Melders 24 Worlds. Did the Mel Melders 24 Worlds yeah, in Miami yeah. uh, last month. Yeah. Just finished finished that. Um, I mean, we've been sailing inshore for the last sort of four or five years. Yeah. I haven't done much offshore sailing for three or four. Yeah. Well, what a boat like to go MC south on. MC38 is not an offshore <laughs> boat, right? <laughs> it really isn't, but they're also good to look at, I've got to say. Yeah, they're great boats. And Nick, you've, you've been working with us for the MCs. Mm -hmm. We've got a nationals coming up, but uh, you should come out, yeah? Come yeah. RPA for that. That'd be good. I'll, I'll go live on time for that. But, like, I've, I've, <laughs> no, I've got to talk about Charlotte. Yeah. I can't tell you how much work has gone in by the crew in getting this boat ready to go to Hobart. Oh, awesome. It's just been amazing. And uh, the skipper, Harley, April, all the guys from RPA, um, we've been putting uh, amazing different, you know, different suit of sails wow. on the boat. Just trying to work out what to do with the boat yeah, in different yeah. conditions. You know, it, that's what we're working on. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, John, I think I'm going to let you go because we've got yeah, so got many so pre-records. Right? <laughs> so much on now that we've actually gotten on air. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Seriously, guys, like, I, I should have filmed that behind the scenes and for you because it was kind of entertaining. Are you going to take the free jacket? <laughs> speaking of that, speaking of free jackets, we do have a competition running over our Rolex Sydney Hobart broadcast brought to you by Zyke. We have an aeroshell jacket, much like this. Thanks for modelling, John. Model? No, model, not steel. No, no, no. <laughs> we have this you know, up for this grabs. Be better than my heavy jacket. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. So an aeroshell jacket in your choice of colour and size is first prize. Are they all light blue? They are not all light blue, but for me they are. <laughs> <laughs> but in second place, for second prize, I can't, I can't see it anywhere, but it's the brand new Zyke Dry Wet Bag and Rob Douglas, a.k.a. MD, a.k.a. Ray, a.k.a. <laughs> I don't think he's going to find it because it's probably on, and he's running around now like uh, Ariana from uh, Wheel <laughs> of Fortune. Bring it on down, Rob Douglas. This is also the wet bag that you could win. Oh, that's nice. That's third prize, actually, I believe. No, second prize. Second prize. Second prize. With? Yes, yeah, with, with straps. Beautiful dry bag, wet bag. There's an iPad 
patching it. Yep, good work, good work. You model that. Now, uh, in third for third prize, some ZKGs, because look at these shoes. Seriously, John. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, we might even... No, he doesn't even want to show his shoes. I mean, really, really, really. They're okay. <laughs> no, I was going to put them in the bin before I put my sea boots on, but now I don't now think I'm going to need You know what? If we look in this bag, I'm going to show you a pair of ZKGs. These are old, oldish ones, but this is a pair of ZKGs, so this could be third price. They're nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll take them too. Oh, pfft. <laughs> <laughs> going to put my size five shoes on. Excellent. But they're the prizes that are up for grabs, plus plenty of cyan visors, beanies, hats. Do you want to put all of those on too? They're in this bag too. Look, you can okay, put a little right. trucker hat on you. Good work, John. I actually like the trucker Yeah, the trucker hat's pretty cool. So we've got plenty of plenty of prizes up for grabs and for those who are watching and have stuck through all the shenanigans of us trying to get online the code word for today is what trouble is trouble <laughs> you have to collect trouble. three code words guys over our broadcast Tell leading all trouble. the way remember to the finish this word. yes remember this word and go to our website to find the other directions now you go i'm gonna go yep thanks, go sailing nick. thanks nick you no, do no. you do a wonderful job thanks so much sean um leave that gear behind hey Someone get him! <laughs> We're going to go to an interview now. I think we've got one ready to go. What have we got? We're going to go to Stace. See you later. We're going to we're going to go to an interview with Stacey Jackson. This is Nick Douglas from Adventures uh, of the Sailor Girl. Still at Sydney City Marine. This time I'm catching up with Stacey Jackson, one of my good mates, but also the, what is your position? Boat captain for Alive? Yeah, I'm the boat captain and I'm the crew boss when and we're racing. Crew boss. Yeah, excellent. Well, she's uh, she's been with this boat for quite a while. A very, very experienced sailor, for those who don't know, did do the Volvo Ocean Race last time around with Team SCA. But you've sailed Alive for quite a while. Alpha Romeo before that. There's been a lot on, on, on your radar. And speaking of radars, Alive been under the radar leading into this Hobart when I don't think it should have been. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think we're coming in as the underdog right now, which is which is a nice way to be in a race like this. The forecast is going to suit us. Yeah. Um, it's a well-rated IRC boat, so, like, you know, all we can do is we'll sail our best uh, ability and, you know, if the weather's for us, you know, it, it could go our way and ultimately it's the big prize. It's all I've ever wanted to win was this race, win the Chattisworth Cup. Yeah. And um, so we'll just, you know, cross see our fingers and see what we can do. Yeah, RP66, Cannon Keel, Slippery Downhill. It could be perfect, really. Yeah, so it's a it's a mini version. It's a shrunk down version of Wild Oats. It's yeah. 66 feet. Um, yeah, skinny boat, Cannon Keel, fast downwind. Uh, so, yeah, we, you know, we're going to go downwind most of the race. So it's it's all looking pretty good. Behind the scenes, everybody says that this boat's a little bit twitchy, like she loves her love, and that really she only responds to you. <laughs> what do you think about these comments? So, uh, it's nice to be back working on the boat, and um, and I think you know we got it going pretty well again, and and you know she looks pretty good. Got to go, got to look good to go good, right? <laughs> She's done a few races in Asia this year. There's been a, a bit of racing really on the cards. Yeah, so the boat actually did uh, a year in Asia, yeah. did the full circuit, did a lot of racing and got a lot of good results while they were up there, which was pretty impressive. I only joined them for the last race, yeah. the China Sea race, and then I started full time when the boat came back to Australia. Perfect. Excellent. Now, who else is on board? Um, yeah, so we got... Um, <laughs> just to give memory on Christmas Day, but we'll go with it. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a test. Uh, so the uh, skipper, Duncan Hine, and yep. the owner, Phil Turner, mm -hmm. um, both Tasmanians. And yes. we've got another couple of Tassie guys. We've got a young guy, Ollie Nichols, um, driving the boat. Perfect. And George Peacock from Tassie. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we've got a few few Sydney guys and a few Brisbane guys um, making up the numbers. Excellent. Well, it's, it's good to hear. And um, I know that you guys are definitely going to go fast. I mean, once you get out those heads, you're going to be gone. You'll probably be, um, be sticking with the 70s for a little while. Yeah, ideally if we can stick on just behind the 70s um, for the running and once, once the subway hits we'll, we'll do the best we can. It doesn't ideally like going up wind in, hard, in heavy weather. Um, but, you know, if we can just be in that same sort of weather system as them, we're, we're going pretty well. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. And for all those who wanted more information on Alive, here it is, straight from the girl who knows all about it. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. No worries. Merry Christmas. <laughs> thank you. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl, still at Sydney City Marine. This time I'm catching up with Stacey Jackson, one of my good mates, but also the, what is your position, boat captain for Alive? Yeah, I'm the boat captain. It's okay. 
And welcome back, guys. That was Stacey Jackson from Alive. You even got a little bit extra. We're just still working out the bugs. But we are live and we are at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia for the Rolex Sydney Hobart pre-game show. Fantastic to be here. And we're going to bang out the pre-records like nobody's business right now because we did happen to start an hour late. But that is no worry. Don't, don't you worry about that. But if you've just tuned in, you'll have to go back to the start of the broadcast once we're done to see the details for our competition, which is just fantastic. Firstly, I just want to make a big shout out to everybody who's helping me behind the scenes here because we did have some very tense moments. We've got my dad and Managing Director Rob Douglas. He's running around making sure that everybody's here to chat to us this morning. My mum, Andrea Douglas, see it's, it's a bit of home love here. Andrea Douglas is on the decks, so we, shall we say. And we've also got Chris Farquharson helping us out as well. He's come to volunteer, which is just fantastic. So we're going to go to another pre-record with Derek Shepparton and Marty Shepparton. They are brothers. They're from Port Kembla. That's down near, down my way. They are awesome. And I had a little bit of a chat to them on their Beneteau 45 yesterday, day before, day before that, about the 23rd. <laughs> we were chilling. We were chilling while they were finishing off all of their boat prep. It was absolutely awesome. Let's go to that little interview. And turn, turn on to... Turn off one. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl on board Black Sheep. There's lots of preparations going on here. And I have uh, Martin and Derek Shepherd, the brothers. You ready to rock? Yeah, we're, we're just about there. I think uh, Marty's down to darning the socks, so <laughs> I think we're nearly on our way. He can't join the interview right now. He will in a second because he's very, very seriously sewing. You love your sewing, don't you, Marty? Oh, I do, I do. I absolutely love it. Now, not all the job, uh, jobs are glamorous when you're preparing. A race like this but look there is the odd chance we might do, need to repair something so we're going to be good and ready yeah excellent and for all those who have never been to hobart this is exactly what happens we just lay back <laughs> we don't lying really do anything lounge. right lying on the lounge <laughs> two fridges over in the galley <laughs> I, I think i spotted some beer up the front though um though your, your missus promises me that that's getting taken off that, that's correct yeah <laughs> unfortunately it's a dry boat but but uh but that's the way that uh, you should sail hobart so pl plenty of time to catch up when you get there. You can catch up when you get there and plenty of, plenty of banter on board. We might get you, Marty, to swing around. We'll get him to turn around and give up on the sewing. And, um, and, and here we are here with these two brothers. Now you, you get to spend a bit of time together when you head south. Yeah, look, it's great, you know. I mean, I think as siblings get older, it's harder and harder to spend time together. And we've got every year three or four committed days together at sea having a great time. So it's brilliant. Yeah, excellent. And you can put him to good slave labour too in the leader. Uh, that, that's right. It's not very often you get to boss your brother around. <laughs> got some, got sewing, some sewing kit. Sewing kit going yeah. on here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang around too long or you might get a job. Might get a job. Yeah, I've already been offered to go to Hobart apparently. Yeah, that's right. And just, we, we need a, a handy uh, commentator on board. And, and I'm sure, sure you'll be able to boss all the crew around. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe I should bring one of my sisters. If you're watching this, don't worry, it's okay. My sisters don't <laughs> sail. So I think this is quite amazing that you two love doing this together. Yeah, look, it's great fun. You know, it's, there's no doubt that it's pretty hard uh, at times during the race, but it's yeah. the, the hard times that make it really fun. Yeah, indeed. But, and, and you don't do too badly either. This morning you're at the press conference for the potential IRC winners. No, we've had a good season, season this year. We, um, we won the Newcastle Bass Race, which yeah. um, well, kind of surprised us, <laughs> but, but it, was, it was great. So um, for a, you know, a, a fun amateur crew, and you know, we're really sailing with our friends, which yeah. is um, just fantastic to get a result like that. And then we came second in Cabbage Tree as well, so yeah. it was good. You're all over it. Yeah. yeah, you're all over it. And it's a beautiful little boat. Yeah, look, it is a great boat. I mean, I think um, for enthusiastic amateurs with not much budget, yeah. um, you know, these boats are terrific. They're production boats that, you know, pretty much come out straight out of the factory with min minimal modification. Uh, and the handicap, the handicap is quite favourable to them. So IRC <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, a bit, that, bit of Velcro holds them in place. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look, no, but seriously, that is a good thing about IRC yeah. racing. Uh, you actually can't take any of this stuff off the boat. Um, the boats are weighed and measured, and they're a production boat that come out of the factory with a minimum amount of appointments, and you have to leave all that on to uh, keep the uh, rating certificate valid. So yeah. we get to go with, to Hobart with an oven and fridges and, ca and comfortable lounges. And brothers. And brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me, but, but that is, I mean, IRC to some people who aren't the, the keenest of sailors, it can be quite daunting. Yeah, it's, it's, um, the good thing is it's a secret rule, so it's a, a bit of a challenge for, 
you know, the the big budget boats yeah. to to sneak around. And I think the great thing with IRC is that everybody's uh, got a got a chance. And, and yeah. yeah. And so so long as your your gear's in reasonable condition and you sail well. <laughs> <laughs> You could, up to scratch. Yeah, yeah that's so right. We, we like the sewing. Yeah, yeah, you need your sewing to be up to scratch. <laughs> we, um, no, seriously, last, last year, uh, Derek and I, in the middle of Bass Strait, in a howling gale, uh, we tore the uh, mainsail on the, oh, on the boat. Really? We spent six hours here in a washing machine uh, repairing, sewing and gluing and taping a sail back together to finish the race. And even with, uh, with all that time, I think we managed to crawl over the line, third in our division, Derek, uh, oh. which was a great achievement. So, I mean, these preparations, you know, your race is not done if you have an issue it's really about seamanship and handling whatever comes up so that's amazing and what a bonding experience too it's like and that yeah so you can do three stitches and then do a run for the companion way to get some fresh air <laughs> your turn <laughs> maybe you don't want to take me to hobart i, I have been known as sailor hill previously <laughs> yeah, yeah no no it's it can be they're joyous times <laughs> yeah no Although I, I, I am going to argue that on a sailing boat, sailing boats seem to deal with that swell when you're moving forward a little bit uh, uh, better than a motorboat. I'm just putting one up for myself. Yeah, yeah, no, no that's, that's true. And, and the pressure in the sails definitely yeah. helps steady out the motion, which is good, but it still gets pretty tough at times. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it just shows you, though, because I'm sure that last year you still did a lot of preparation. Uh, it still shows you that things go wrong even when you prepare as much well, as you do. I mean, I think that they do. And, I mean, there were some very, very big budget boats that mm. pulled out in the first night, yeah. you know, with serious damage. 31 of them, I believe. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, serious damage on the first night in conditions which were tough but not uh, not nearly as tough as we've seen. So, you know, I mean, it, being prepared is one thing, but I think seamanship and knowing, you know, how to sail the boat um, with what sails up in, in what particular conditions is just as important. Yeah, which is awesome. Well, thank Thanks guys for having me on board for the sewing lessons and good banter. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great and it's a far cry from uh, what, our, what we normally do at Port Kimball Sailing Club exactly. on the lakes. <laughs> we, love, we love the South Coast people too. Yeah, that's it, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good fun. <laughs> so we'll see you uh, after this in summer down on the lake for another yeah, race, hey? Yeah, exactly. We'll, uh, we'll pop down to the South Coast I think in January. No, wait, wait, January's flat out. February. February. February, we'll book it in. A That's little it. sail from Port Kettle to Sailing Club. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, I'll see you in Hobart. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> if you're still standing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be on this couch, mate. Like. <laughs> and we're back. Welcome, everybody, to the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. My name's Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. And this is our yeah, coverage live the for the Rolex Sydney Hobart There's 2016 brought to you by Zyke. Chev Bruland is sitting uh, next to me. And, and We've had a few Chef issues this brothers. morning getting our stream up, but yeah, none we're, we're as big as your think, issue uh, leading Marty's into Hobart, my, 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 my gorgeous so girl. And yet you're still here to talk to me, which just shows how amazing you are. You can't join the interview right now. Oh, no worries. No, we decided to come to me anyway. Very, very seriously sewing. You love your sewing, don't you, Marty? I do, I do. Absolutely. Now, for those who may not know, Chev Bruland is the owner of the Mills 45 Concubine, which unfortunately broke its mast a few weeks ago and... And I guess that's one of the stories of Hobart that we don't often hear. Yeah, look, it was really, um, it was a really sort of uh, unexpected thing that happened. It was sort of uh, last weekend in November. It was our last offshore race in South Australia, preparing to uh, head to Sydney. We were get, planning to leave to Sydney on the Monday after racing on the weekend, and uh, yeah, well, our. Um, we lost our mast on the Saturday afternoon in, in you know relatively calm light conditions, so it was it was oh, a yeah. shock to everyone. <laughs> we've got it. We've got a coffee for Chef. We've got a coffee machine running. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Need it. And um, no, so it was uh, it was devastating. Actually, we were really uh, felt like we had had a really great preparation and a great um, great lead up, and we're really looking forward to coming here and, and having having a really good crack at this race. So yeah. next year, you know, we'll be back. Yeah, that's good. Um, that's really good to hear because I know that you've got such a strong unit, and I've. Spoken Spoken to Chev around the world and like you know through your concubines the 40.7 and now into the Mills 45 you guys just keep coming back for more which is so nice to see. Yeah look we um, we had a big year planned so we were obviously here in Sydney for the um, 
Sydney to Gold Coast Yacht Race yeah. in July. And unfortunately, that one didn't go well for us either because we were caught up in the in the pile up of boats at the beginning. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've had uh, two, you know, and then obviously not making it to Sydney at this time of year. So the last six months have been a bit of a rough trot. But that being said, we've had some great times this year. We had a good run in Hamilton Island where we learned a lot about the boat. Yeah. Um, and we did, you know, we've had some great sailing in Adelaide as well. So I really think we've got some positives to take out of the year, even though there have been some negatives and we're just constantly trying to take those and make the boat better and faster. Yeah, and I think that's all that you can do and I know that the team really bonded together when, you know, you bond together through thick and thin, so it's, I, I know that you guys will be back. Yeah, look, we've got a really great unit. We've got a good group of guys and um, I think that's key to, to keeping people um, wanting to come back sailing and to keep the boat going fast. So we're really trying to perhaps um, keep that team together and uh, look forward to next year. Yeah. yeah. And, and speaking of that team that you have that's really, really strong, I interviewed Silas Nolan yesterday. He's a regular on our Adventures of a Sailor Girl show. I've caught up with him around the world this year and he's going to sail on Chinese Whisper mm -hmm. um, for this Hobart. Yeah, so a couple of our guys have have um, been lucky enough to be able to find rides on other boats. Some yeah. Silas is on Chinese Whisper. Got our bowman Jesse on um, Aiken Hames Charlie. So cool. another South Australian boat. Uh, yeah, and then you know couple of other guys actually looked around too so I think you know the, the good guys will find rides yeah. and um, and we've got a great contingent from South Australia this year there there's four boats here from SA and with us it would have been five so that's the strongest no, um, showing from SA we've had in a long time it's just absolutely incredible so we're gonna we're gonna hear more from the South Australian boats too in um, in, in the next pre-records and as the day continues but thank you so much Chev for dropping past we're gonna cut to an interview with Silas Nolan who's sailing on Chinese Whisper for the Rolex Sydney Hobart Thank you. <laughs> this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl with Silas Nolan, who's literally just flown in from Adelaide to go south on his ride, Chinese Whisper, tomorrow. There's a crack of sunset going on behind us, Silas. <laughs> it is. It's not as warm as here in Adelaide. It's about 40 degrees in Adelaide now. I've just spent the whole day in the pool and had to come here. So, anyway. Life's tough. Life's tough in the, you know, with the famous people. If you want to call it that. <laughs> No, awesome. But it's great that you were able to go home and spend time with your lovely family. Yeah. But the Chinese whisper, you haven't been south on her before, but she's, as everyone can see, she's a bit of a weapon behind us here. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. should be quite good. I've only just kind of joined the program a couple yeah. of weeks ago uh, due to an unfortunate incident, uh, yes. which I'm sure you'll talk about shortly. Yeah, we'll, um, uh, we'll talk about that one. Uh, I've sailed with a lot of the guys on board before, so um, yeah. it's not completely new. Um, and I've sailed these kind of boats before, so just sort of yeah. jump on and go. Yeah, jump on and go. Uh, for those who don't know, Silas is a fairly interesting character, but one of our best exports. Uh, he sails with the RAND crew and also the Proteus crew, who I continually call Shockwave, but they're Proteus. Yeah, well, we're the old Shockwave team anyway, but we are Proteus now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. you've had a, a massive year. I, yep. I think you're the only person I know who has had more frequent flyer miles this year than me. Maybe you need more friends. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's been a pretty big year for you, mate. Um, I mean, is it nice to finish it off with one at home? It is. It is. Um, it's been a very busy year. Um, it's been nice, to actually. It's been my longest stint at home for a couple of years, actually, the last five or six weeks yeah. since the last 52 event finished. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was always nice to come home and spend some time and hang with the family and then yeah. go to Hobart. Exactly. <laughs> now, you're more famously known overseas as a bowman. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um, with the Mills 45 concubine, who unfortunately won't be heading south, you were a crew boss, a boat captain, uh, a build manager. Pro project leader, I guess, yeah, I guess exactly. you want to call it. Like a, a massive role, and, and, um, and I'm sure you did a bit of everything on that boat. No, I just told everyone what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so modest. <laughs> but on this boat, yeah. you know, what are you doing? Uh, I'm doing the pit and crew boss cool. as well, so... And just get to hang out with my mate Frank. <laughs> you, you, everyone, everyone's coming down to put their kid on. This is one of the awesome parts of Hobart too that you don't get to see but behind the scenes. Everyone comes on Christmas Day to put all of their kid on the boat. Yeah, well, we don't want to do it tomorrow. It's a frenzy, Danny, tomorrow. So, you just want to get on and kind of hide. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> but um, but at least you've got a ride to go south on because I know there are a few from Concubine who may not have found a ride. Yeah, so it was about um, oh, four, five weeks ago now, yeah. four weeks ago. We had a little unfortunate incident in our last hit out in Adelaide on the uh, the great little ship, and um, unfortunately the rig's in two or three pieces, and unfortunately won't be able to fit, won't be able to fix in time for the race. So 
That was the end of that, unfortunately. But, it's uh, a bit crap because that Mills 45 would have really loved this forecast. Yeah. Although yeah. the forecast has changed so much this week, I'm a bit lost. <laughs> to be honest, we would have been happy with everything. Yeah. So she's a good all-round boat and we were pretty prepared, so but obviously not enough. But <laughs> yeah. well, you, you can't help everything. But it's good to see that you will be heading south and you, that you did find another ride. And um, I'm sure that Chinese Whispers going to go quite well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a nice quick run and then a couple of days of, um, what do you call that, uh, I don't know, debriefing. <laughs> Rehydrating, debriefing while discussing the next race. Exactly. <laughs> the stuff that we don't film. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't. No, we shouldn't film that. I did have some interviews in Customs House last year, but that's not happening this year. Or maybe we'll do a live show from Customs House. That could be fun. Nah? All right. Awesome. I'm going to let you go because it is Christmas night and I should go home and edit all of these pre-records. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, mate. You too. <laughs>Thank you guys so much for your support. It's been absolutely awesome to get everybody together to be able to provide this broadcast, even though we're a little bit late, but don't you worry, we're still going to deliver. And speaking of delivering, we've so far heard from John Bacon. He dropped in live and we got a little bit of a preview of our competition. You can find more details at www.sailorgirlhq.com. We just spoke to Sheb Brullen, who's the owner of Concubine Yachting, uh, the Mills 45 that won't be heading south this year because they did break their mast. And then Silas Nolan, uh, great to hear from him. He's now sailing on Chinese Whisper and is actually the boat captain, manager, watch captain, etc., etc., for Concubine. So great to see him out there. Also sailed on uh, Shockwave, now Proteus, and also has sailed with the RAN team this year, as well as Stacey Jackson from Team SCA, who's running a live the RP66. Now there's a hive of activity forming around the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia right now because the final briefing is going to be at 8.30 so we'll be getting an update on the weather but it is sounding like that suddenly is not going to push through as hard as we thought and that might mean that I don't need to change my flights which is very exciting. So we're going to cut to an interview now that I did with David Witt, the skipper of Scallywag, one of the four maxis that is heading south this year in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. We now have a fleet of 89 boats that's dropped down from 91. We've seen one Ichiban withdraw and another with motor issues unfortunately. But uh, Scallywag has come a long way in the last year since it was just on the water for uh, the Sydney Hobart last time as Ragamuffin 100. They've done so much sailing and David Witt managed to find a new owner to take on the boat after Sid Fisher wanted to pass it on and he will be in the next Volvo Ocean race which will be fantastic to see as well. So we might cut over to that interview as soon as Andrea Douglas, the techie, is ready. And if you are around the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, please come and drop past. Make sure you share the love, share the content, because we're going to be giving prizes out all over the place, which will be just fantastic. And uh, I can't wait to make you all a part of the action for the Rolex Sydney Hobart in 2016. Let's go to that interview exactly with David Witt from Scallywag. Girl. On beautiful Christmas Day <laughs> on the lovely yacht Fidelis with Nigel, the owner. Nigel, she is beautiful. Uh, that's true. It's a classic yacht and uh, everywhere we go, it doesn't matter where we are around the Pacific or up and down the Australian coast, it just turns the eye. Uh, it must do that. I mean, I'm walking down the dock here at the squadron and she's just the feature. It does look special. It looks different to most of what you see on Sydney Harbour, doesn't it? That's so absolutely true. Now, this yacht, for those who don't know, actually took line honours in the Rolex Sydney Hobart in 1966. So in 1966, it was the first Kiwi boat to get across the Tasman and actually then take out line honours. So that was quite a trip for them. It was like a two and a half thousand mile round trip. And um, when they got into Sydney, um, there was a certain amount of mirth and derision on the Sydney waterfront and uh, said, how on earth are you going to get this boat to Hobart? Well, it got to Hobart and it was 17 and a half hours in front of the next boat. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, not easy journeys in those days either. Well, I don't, yeah, I think the weather was actually quite light, which okay. favoured... 
um, for Dalis because although it's a heavy boat by today's standards, it's 16, 17 tonnes. Uh, then, Quite then, big. yeah, and then it was seen to be what they call a lightweight flyer, a metre oh, boat, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, she's definitely like got beautiful lines and so narrow and clean. Are you talking about the crew or is that the boat? Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's the boat. That's the one it looks like, and that's I think what is the attraction of the boat. It's got so much character, and uh, it's had uh, an awful lot of supporters over the years. I bet she has, and it does. There's something about having a lot of timber around as well. It just takes your breath away. Yeah, and it's a very solid boat, uh, triple plank carry, um, very soundly built and probably looks very similar to what it was 50 years ago, but it's got a few more toys and a bit more technology. Yes, that said, 50 years, it is 2016, which makes it the 50th anniversary of this boat taking line honours. And the last time you raced her was in 2006, 40 year anniversary. It was, yeah. We had this little campaign called 40 Years On, which was 10 years ago. And this little campaign is called uh, Winners and Grinners. So, winners in 1966 and grinners because we're just so pleased to be giving it another go. Oh, which is fantastic to see and, and the weather does look good for you guys again come 2016. Well you never know about the Hobart till you know about the Hobart and uh, it certainly looks better than uh, most years and it certainly looks reasonable for us so we're pretty happy about that and uh, we're still trying to get a fix on when that southerly is coming through and how big it is but we'll be right we'll get there. I, I think everyone will get there and everyone's waiting to see when that southerly will come through but hopefully for you guys for your sake I know that you, you might not want it to be as strong as what maybe some of the bigger boats are hoping for. Uh, that's, yeah, well, I don't know. I think there's, there's some who wish it on others, you know, yeah. but I wouldn't do that. No. So uh, we'll just see. I think it's going to be quite an interesting weather pattern as that southerly comes up the coast. So those that are further ahead, um, they might get a bit more, but it might actually just wind out to nothing very much. And so we don't know. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We will. That's the plan. That's the plan. Now, for those who think we're sickos, being on this beautiful boat on Christmas Day, actually, I'd like to be on this boat any day of the year, quite frankly, but on Christmas day it is Hobart time a lot of people don't realize that you know we've still got to get the boats ready to go south even on Christmas well we've been uh, just doing the final things the last two or three days we sailed out on Thursday for the last crew practice but then uh, you know we've had to scrub the boat and today as you can hear with the motor ticking over yeah. we're just pulling the fridges down so we got the freezers right yep. and I noticed a couple of the crew put their freezer meals into the freezer already so it's all kind of getting set for tomorrow excellent that's great to see and you're looking good too nice little crew uniform going on here well, this is the Zeke moment, so uh, we've actually had a, a really nice deal with those guys. They've looked after us well. And do you want to see the back of the shirt? I, I do want to see the back of the shirt. Let's turn this around. Yeah, yeah, turn me around, turn me around. Oh, there we go. Winners in 1966, grinners in 2016. I love it. That's fantastic. So that's the that's the shirts, and we've got some battle flags up the front oh, too. So, I'll, yeah. um, I'll have to get a close-up on those flags for everybody at home. But good luck to you, Nigel, on the beautiful Fidelis, and, um, and hopefully you have a, a very pleasant ride south for her 50th anniversary of winning in 1966. We're looking forward to having some fun. Thanks awesome. so much. No Thank worries. You. Good luck. Merry Christmas. <laughs> And welcome back to the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. My name's Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl with your Rolex Sydney Hobart 2016 pre-game show brought to you by Zyke. Thank you for joining us. Fantastic interview that I did yesterday morning. What a great way to start off Christmas down at the Royal Yacht Squadron. Absolutely beautiful boat for Dalis. Interesting story, as you will have just heard, it won online honours in 1966. This year, 2016, it's going again. It's the 50-year anniversary of that event, and I just love their shirts, which just happen to be Zyke as well. On the back, winners, 1966, Grinners, 2016. Absolutely awesome to have caught up with Nigel Stoke yesterday, and he also popped past when we'd just gone live too, so it was great to see him in person too. So um, we, we might line up another pre-record. I'm thinking that we'll now actually go to David Witt from Scallywag. We'll get ready for that in just a second, but... Um, at the moment, we're now just waiting for the briefing. We'll probably have a few people drop past just around the briefing because everyone's getting ready to go and do that. Final preparations down on the dock. It's not really a hive of activity yet. Definitely wasn't a hive of activity when we got here at 5am. Uh, I can tell you that. But it does tend to build over the day and we see the energy really get to that next level. And, um, and, and speaking about next level, Scallywag have really taken their program to the next level this year. So we're going to cut to an interview with David Witt and uh, hear from him.
Yeah, well, I mean, we'd like to think we're known to get there. So yeah. you've got to get there first to win, exactly. you know. So that's number one. But I think it'll be a good race. I think it'll be interesting because I think Loyal are just going to take off out to sea. Yeah, OK. And us and Rico will be together. So yeah. it'll be sort of two versus one. Yeah. And that's, I think that's a good thing, though, because then you push each other too. Like, you've got that ability. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I mean, you've got to, got to want to win, you've got to beat Oates, right? Yeah. And at the end of the day, I think if we beat Oates and don't win, well, we've still done the best we can, you know. So you've got a good forecast, you've got new sales, you've had a team of other things over the next year or so. Yeah, yeah, full, <laughs> yeah, full program for of sailing going. We've got a child in front of an owner, so maybe my crystal ball was working. Huh? Tick, thank you, Santa. Yeah, yeah, very good. <laughs> thank you. I think it was my birthday that day too, so happy birthday. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> No worries. Well, I, um, I for one, will be looking forward to seeing you get to Hobart and, um, and hopefully where you want to be. Yeah, let's see ya. Merry Christmas. Welcome back. My name's Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. The official briefing is going to be starting and, and so there might be a bit of background noise so we might cut you straight over to a pre-record so you don't need to listen to the weather but we will update you on the weather as soon as that briefing happens. We're going to line up an interview with Ali, Alessandra. For all the guys watching, you're going to absolutely love her. A pocket of energy from Italy. She's sailing on fly and Flying Fish Arctos and doing main trim. I swear, she's the hottest little ball of energy I've ever seen in my life. And you're really going to love to hear from her. So we're going to cut to this interview with Alessandra while the, while the briefing continues here at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. Especially with the for Adventures of a Sailor Girl, catching up with Al. Excellent. And now you're in Sydney. Now I'm in Sydney, and uh, I actually lived in Australia ten years ago. Oh, amazing. So yeah. No, it's the first. Flying fish, Arctos. Yes. Yes. In race on a 70 foot. But you're doing the main sheet, the main. Sheet. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing. You know. No worries. She's all over it no on a 55 no foot. It's fine. It's all under control. <laughs> It's good. Control. Well, especially if you've done, you know, some of the round the world stuff on a 70 footer. Yes, absolutely. Um, dealing with big yachts is um, it's it's a difficult job because you really have to be careful. There's a lot of big winches and uh, so easy care to you know to help. Um, but yeah, but they they work quite quite well. So as long as you do your techniques right, yes. then uh, yeah, I think that's what a lot of people don't realize that girls can be strong because yeah, we seem absolutely. to grow up learning techniques mm. to get around it. You know? Yeah, yeah it's uh, it, there's a lot to do with technique rather yeah. than actual physical strength. Yes. Um, one of the skipper of the the round world race I participated in uh, was a, was a girl and uh, not as small as us, but yes. still quite pretty. And she could really sweat the mainsail up by by herself. Okay. So yeah, you excellent. know. Well, it's lovely to have met you, Ale, and Thanks. just to have this five minutes to chill. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you so much, <laughs> and fair winds to everybody. Yeah. And, yeah. and good I'll luck. See you, I'll see you in Hobart. Yeah, yeah. I'll be in Hobart. I'll be there. I'll be there. We'll um. Beer there. Yeah, beer, beer. Oh, um, right. Peroni. <laughs> Peroni. Some whiskey. I heard is very good there. So this one's not? straight into it. Whiskey. I'll probably be on the <laughs> ground, and she'll be just like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> good luck. And Cromedy Magellan. Oh, excellent. Girls. <laughs> now, the reason why I'm talking to these girls both together is because you're thinking about, well, you're in final preparations as well for another race, the Melbourne to Osaka. That's right. That's yeah. right. Coming up in, in March of 2018. Yep, yeah, And we're the only all female team in it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what we like to see. <laughs> Excellent. Well, what's happening with the preparation for that race as opposed to the Rolex Sydney Hobart? It's yeah, well, some of our, our preparation has been a bit on hold while we've been getting ready for, um, yeah, for the, the Hobart race. But um, as soon as we, we get back, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's my little SNS 34 that, that we're going on. <laughs> oh, so very like Azuro, uh, for those who know. Shane Kearns is Azuro. It's sort of a bit like the poor cousin of, of Azuro. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the boat is the designed build. You guys are launching boat is the only Tasmanian entry. That, that's correct. So it was designed, built and fully crewed by Tasmanians. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. <laughs> that's awesome. Just another little tidbit. Now. <laughs> and welcome back to the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. Harbour, There's so many Harbour, people Harbour. around now, yes, guys, as yeah. this briefing's happening. We just had yeah, a momentary so lapse in our data service. Haven't. So what we're going to do is come back to an interview that was partially the way through with two lovely girls that I met, not yesterday, but the day before, Joanna and Svetlana. 
and what we're going to do is, is listen to their story about how they're sailing on different boats for the Rolex Sydney Hobart, but they're working on being the first all-female to go S34, I believe, the same on. Here's an our team from Clipper yeah. Race. Yeah, go on crew. Yeah. Go girls. <laughs> now, the reason why I'm talking my little SNS 34 that, that we're going on. Oh, so very like a Juro, uh, for those who know, Shane Kearns is a Juro. It's sort of a bit like the poor cousin. Mm, yes, so uh, my boat Morningstar certainly has a lot to aspire to, um, but uh, the refit is going well. We're getting a, a new rig, um, yeah, from Ormas in, in Tasmania. And yeah, lot, lots of lots of work and training for us too. Now, speaking to of Tasmania, Rolex Sydney Hobart, heading to Hobart, but your boat is the only Tasmanian entry. That, that's correct. So it was designed, built and fully crewed by Tasmanians. So we're, we're pretty <laughs> proud of that. That's <laughs> yeah. awesome. Just another little tidbit. Now, so Svetlana, you guys are launching from Middle Harbour Yacht Club, is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So we are sailing academy. We have a uh, good uh, skipper and two. So, so skipping the boat and then training crew, uh, 30, 12, 12 people oh, yeah awesome. wow. uh, and for everybody it's like back in their bucket list so everybody's <laughs> very excited there about is, there is something about the Rolex Sydney Hobart that yes. just makes it you know one of those things you've got to do so. yeah uh, but for me it's like the first step to oh. doing a Melbourne tour soccer race yeah, yes yeah, sure. well that's really good well it's nice to see you two together even though you're on different boats going to Hobart with one goal of doing the Melbourne tour soccer that's right yeah. and I do have to say nice hat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. No, 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 no. Well, good luck, both of you. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you. <laughs> this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl with our live Sydney Hobart broadcast brought to you by Zyke. James from Giacomo. It's got a, a good little bit of alliteration there. Your first Hobart, mate. Yeah, first Hobart this year. Literally just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago or so. So, yeah, see how it goes. And... How exciting. So, oh, I'm pretty excited but kind of nervous. I know that like the five minutes before the start it's going to kick in but nah, it should be good. So, awesome. Yeah. Now, it's really exciting for a lot of yachting enthusiasts this year because we've got the three Volvo 70s. Mm -hmm. Shokomo, uh, uh, uh We snapped the rig in the 14 yeah. race so that wasn't more um, wind for oh, each boat so yeah. back check ahead then ask ahead then. Yeah, yeah, because uh, yeah, I know, uh, I'm not sure what year Maserati is, but they've been optimising that for a while. Yeah. Um, Blackjack, they've done quite a bit to that, so. There's an almighty bowsprit on that thing. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. I saw it during the big boat race and I was like, look at that bowsprit. Yeah. I mean, what, what have you guys been doing, apart from obviously a new rig since 2014? To be honest, we've kept it pretty straight, the old... Um, We've kept it as standard as possible and just we added in um, ballast tanks in the stern to start with but then they didn't really work out so we took those out and just new yeah. Now, people I was sailing and I was six and over time I was sort of nagged out about getting a boat and I was like oh screw Palmer's up for sale so and then next minute you got a Volvo 70. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too bad it's a good way to start it off so that would have been the best Christmas present ever. Can I just say quietly, hey, Dad, let's buy a boat. Here, son, have a Volvo 70. Yeah. I know I didn't quite go like that, but still, I'd claim it. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll claim it any day, so, yeah. Oh, no, that's mm. awesome. Yeah. No, nah, it's just over time, sort of. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. And, and who else is on board with you in the team? Oh, I've got a whole range of people. Um, me, Dad, I've got Nick, oh, older brother. Um, uh, I got like Richard Bicknell um, and a few of the other 70 sailors. Mm -hmm. oh, oh God, I lost all the names. A little bit of a mind blank. That's yeah. alright. It's Christmas, and I'm I'm having trouble remembering my own name, so it's all good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but it'll be great to see you out there on 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 Boxing Day for the start. Have Have you been watching for the past few years and wanted to just jump on, or is it just a rite of passage when you turn 18 in your family? Uh, <laughs> No, nah, it's I've always watched I've always watched it pretty much every year since I can remember. Um, occasionally as well, I'm bed and I'm just like, oh, I just watch another Sydney Hobart start or, or the highlights and stuff. So I know for me, for my sailing and stuff, it's always been in the back of my head that I wanted to do a Hobart. So yeah. 
Elliot, if I'm going to do a first one, it's I've got Dad and my brother and stuff on the 70, so That's great. I'll enjoy it. And then maybe next year, see what boat I can get on and then move my way up and see how it goes. Yeah. Thanks, Dad, yeah. for the leg up and I'll yeah. see you later. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. No, it's good and welcome morning. back to the Cruising Your Cup of Australia. My name's Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. This is our pre-game show for the Rolex Sydney Hobart brought to you by Zyke. And with me, I have Mr. Jim Gale. He is the navigator for Bojess, the Boaten 80. That's going to be a great ride south for you guys, a little sled ride. The forecast is certainly pretty exciting, like one of the better ones in recent memory. So uh, we will hope it plays out and it um, should be a quick trip. Absolutely. Now, having just come from the weather briefing, it's, it's changed quite a bit over the past week, hasn't it? Well, the weather briefing, they always, um, they always add a little bit to it. I think they really try to encourage you to... Um, to be just safe. remember to be safe and there could yeah. be a bit more wind than you expect. Yeah. I mean generally the forecast has been dropping over the last week um, which actually probably not a bad thing for us you yeah. know not, not not being too windy down. Okay, there we go awesome and we're back oh my gosh there's so many people around today and uh, there's a few media on that wireless and our, uh, we, we also have a backup with, our, with my phone but it seems to just hate me today the technology's not been good do you ever find you struggle with technology given that you're a navigator? Absolutely <laughs> Um, it's, it's nothing like, you know, you sit at your desk at home doing all your preparation yeah. and the internet works and your computer works and then you get on a boat and it's healed over and slamming and nothing works. It's an absolute, um, one of the hardest parts of it. Oh wow, I'd hate to go live if I was on an angle then because this hates being upright so <laughs> that would be hopeless. But but back to the boat, Nady. How's the team prep been going? I know you've got a few, a few new people on board. Uh, Gavin and uh, Aaron have done a really nice job of putting together a crew with a good mix of youth and experience and... Um, it's been a pretty happy bunch and we've been sailing well the last month here in Sydney and um, you know we're all really looking forward to the race. Excellent. Well, it'll be really interesting to see how you guys go. Maybe a little bit more pressure would favour you on IRC, but y you're happy? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think we have realistic expectations. You know, like the, the weather can dictate the results a little bit and you can only play the uh, hand you've been dealt and we'll do that to the best of our ability and, and see where we end up. Absolutely awesome. Well, it's been lovely to chat to you, Mr. Jim. Thank you for popping on our show and, um, and good luck to the whole Bojess team. Thank you. No worries. Right. Lovely to see you. Excellent. So what we might do after we've been talking about um, a few variables that come into play, we might see if we can find our interview with Paul Clitheroe. Paul Clitheroe won the Tattersalls Cup last year. He is on the T-52 balance. And we spoke the other day just over here, I think it was about three days ago actually, when the, the forecast was looking a little bit hairier and he was a bit fearful about downwind running on the TP-52 and slamming off some waves. But we started talking about how it's not really the Rolex Sydney Hobart, it's the Rolex Sydney to Tasman Light and then cross your fingers. So let's hear from Paul Clitheroe. <laughs> This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia with last year's Tattersalls Cup winner and all-round legend, Paul Clitheroe. How are you going? Good, thank you. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, great press conference just now with the potential overall winners, which we mm. all know could change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I tell you what, though, I said this to you last year because of the weather pattern, uh, and it was a very different weather pattern. I said to you last year I thought the TP-52s were probably the right sort of length of boat to do well last year. Good prediction. Well, yeah, no, but, but, but I didn't predict that of the nine TP-52s, six would not make it through the storm. Yes. Because I, I, I've got to tell you, beating three of them uh, to win the trophy overall, because you've got to win your big boat, looks pretty good, actually. The, press, the pressure looks pretty nice for us. But the, the thing that no-one's talking about, which I find a bit odd, is that people think, you know, you're sailing into a storm is the big issue. I'm far more worried about this year than last year. I, I find sailing into a decent storm, we all know full well, boat yeah, speed yeah. is not that high. Mm -hmm. You've got no kite up, you're obviously hard on the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you, you, you know as well as I do, waves breaking over the boat, stuff breaking, blah, 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 people getting sick. Yeah. But going downwind, I, I've got a, you know, I'm pretty certain we're going to be doing 25, 28 knots in Bass Strait in the middle of the night in big seas. Yeah. And if you're actually going to have a major wipeout, I'd rather have a wipeout at nine knots into the wind than 25 knots downwind in the middle of the night in Bass Strait. So I'm actually more nervous about this year than last year. Oh running, running downwind hard in fast light boats, a small steering mistake in the middle of the night and you're on your ear. Yeah. And so, so funnily enough, I'm actually a bit more anxious about this year than last year. Even though it's going to be fast, the speed makes me anxious about crew safety. That's really, really interesting. And we all know that safety is paramount and our crews are our priority. Well, look, absolutely, and, um, you know, look, the, the thing that I'm so honoured to have won last year 
but but seriously, but, but, yeah, but but, but <laughs> no, I got given it. <laughs> yeah, it was free. I want it. Uh, but um, but basically, uh, I I feel particularly as you know, I'm I'm 61 now, and I've got plenty more sailing in front of me. But mm. the thing I don't want on my sailing CV is seriously injured crew, or even worse, you know, a man overboard in Bass Strait in those conditions. So we're going over. Bluntly, I'm, we, we're doing less about winning the race on the boat at the moment, and what we're doing on the boat at the moment is clip on, clip on, clip on. Safety, safety, safety. That is very, very important. I've been discussing this with people in the past few weeks. Clipping on, clip on, two, people. Two places, two places. Clip on, yeah, absolutely. No, that's a massive mes message, I think, just overall. And, and if anybody's been on a TP52, when you're going that fast that you're flying over the next swell in front of you, that whole rig-shaking effort mm -hmm. is pretty scary. Well, again, I, and again, because the, the front of the boat is lifting so dramatically, and, you know, it, yeah, I know it sounds, but it's also simple things. It, it's just reminding people, obviously, we don't have a toilet um, on these boats. So, you know, in wind, it's reminding people, you know, we, and it sounds a bit gruesome, we, we use a hospital bottle down below. Wow. Well, if you're on the back of the boat doing the boy thing, um, you don't want to lose you. well, and, and all of a sudden, if the, if the back of the boat gets hurled off a short Peter swell, then it falls down again. You're 10 feet in the air. The boat's going that way at 25 knots. I know where you are. You're not on the boat. And so there's all sorts of... At this of moment, I'm just going to be like, this is the rock starness and the glamour that is sailing for those that have not actually done an offshore. <laughs> and no kitchen, no running water, no toilet. It's, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I just love it. Absolutely blissful. But you're, you, you are one of those guys that, you know, you're, you're, you're a figurehead for your crew and we all know that safety is paramount. Yeah. But that said, last year you did... Have a great run up the Derwent. Mm. Well, look, that was the highlight of my life because, um, well, it really was. Uh, 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 in sailing, 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 sailing. Wife, wife, wife and children, wife and children. Happy wife, happy wife. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no all, all good there, I'm pleased to report, 34 yes. years later. Um, oh, that's awesome. But the, yeah, look, but the uh, two years ago in my Beneteau 45, um, I thought either we or Daryl Hodgson's Victoire on identical mm -hmm. boat had it won. Got to Tasman Light at dusk. Uh, one of my crew said, oh, what a shame, it's dusk, I'd love to see Tasman light at dawn. Yeah, I got to. Oh, no. Yeah, we, we sat there for, t for 10 hours, we went backwards in the tide for four or five hours, forwards in the tide, and as the sun came up, according to our GPS, we had not moved from dusk. And at Loki, Loki, who we thought we had beaten, the Loki guys who won it, were sitting in the bar, having beers, going, either Clitheroe or Hodgkinson's going to beat us. Um, no, killed us. And oh, so, that, so, makes, that makes ocean well, racing sound exhilarating. Oh, no. oh it, was a, it was a lovely view. I mean, there was no, everyone was just having a sleep. There was no wind. So last year we got, to the, uh, we got down to Tasman Light at about 11 o'clock and we got picked up by a, a little, uh, a perfect sort of 20 odd knot southerly. Popped up our code zero. I think we made the 40 nautical miles from Tasman Light to the finish line in about two and a half hours. Yeah, you were de monstering de it. Dead, well, yeah, but de just dead flat water. Yeah. And then we, and then basically, as you, as you know only too well, all the boats, the smaller boats, I thought were going to beat us. The reality is they hit the Derwent at midnight. And, and what and, you had that other and, year. And they got absolutely smashed. Yeah. So the only thing I'm a bit nervous about this year is at the moment our model has us in the Derwent uh, at about um, 3 o'clock on, um, uh, so 48 hours into the race. So we're, we're on the, so we're the 20, yeah. Tw yeah, 28th. Yeah. Um, and I, if that's delayed by three or four hours, it looks to us as though the Derwent's going to shut down about eight o'clock at night. And so we're going to be really, really, for us, really, really, really working hard to get to Tasman Light in that late morning on day two. So what you're really saying is it's not really the Rolex Sydney Hobart, it's the Rolex Sydney to the mouth of the Derwent. Shane, your bag's just there. Yeah. <laughs> I've been minding Shane Cairns' yeah. bag all morning. <laughs> no, but it's really not the Rolex Sydney home art. It's, it's the Sydney to Tasman light before dusk. Correct. And uh, look, look, one, look, it doesn't. I mean, look, once in a while you, you'll get... I've had a couple of nights where we've had breeze in the Derwent, but yeah. there, if, there's, if you're around a high-pressure system, which looks like this year, I'm, I'm very sure there's going to be no wind in the Derwent at midnight. And so you can sail the best race, get to Tasman light at dusk, while well, I reckon prepare to see Tasman light at dawn. And I'm hoping it's not us because we've got, we've got no food. We've got, <laughs> like, like, what well, are we? I'm hoping it's not you, and I'm hoping that it's um, a window where we get most of the fleet, you know, is, is, yeah. is dispersed, so I don't have to wait up all night for you guys. Well, it'll, prob it'll, pro it'll probably be the case. But no, look, the, the weather pattern is really exciting, and uh, yeah, the TP52, our computer modelling is saying pretty much exactly two days. Yeah. And that, look, to get That's to Hobart, oh, that, but wouldn't it be lovely to be in two, wouldn't it be? I, that, that means they've only got two nights of bloody 
bloody space food and hot water and rubbish like that. So I, I, I tell you, if I get to see you in Hobart on 26, if I get to see you in Hobart about lunchtime on the 28th, win, lose or draw, you're going to find one very happy previous winner. Yeah, and if that does happen, I'm going to make sure I have a drink for you on the dock, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I know there's, I, I'm not much of a better, but I'm not much of a gambler. But there's a few boats I'd put money on before us. I reckon a Chinese Whisper, I think, will go like a, like we only just beat them last year. That's a fantastic boat. Isn't it a and, and and look, Matt Allen's itchy barn. Look, mine's yeah. mine's the as you know, mine's the oldest of the TPs. Mm. The advantage is when it gets heavy. We tend, you know, we're strong, yeah. um, but the, the newer TPs are lighter than us. Uh, bluntly, Matt Allen's Itchy Barn is faster than we are. Without any it doubt. is really it's fast. Like, it's, a, it's a rocket ship, you know, yeah. without any doubt. And his crew, I mean, seriously, we look like Dad's army compared to Matt's crew. It's really embarrassing. That said, you are now wearing some very spiffy oh, clothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, well, speaking of speaking of Matt Allen and my mate Alex Zaniger, yeah, they um, no, we, we don't we don't like I don't I'm an amateur I don't want to be sponsored, but yeah. um, Zike very generously gave us a, a, a we paid, yeah. but they gave us a really good deal on a set of Zike a really good deal on a set of Zike gear. So, for the first time in history, you'll actually see balance on the start line where we're all wearing roughly the same coloured shirt. Roughly, but well, still, some of them are, some 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 have already got them dirty. <laughs> That's so cool to see, though. And maybe, you know, you don't like your space food, and hopefully we're, we're aiming for 48 hours, yeah. but hopefully you'll still be dry at the other end. <laughs> yeah, well, well. No, oh, sorry, you're saying my Zike gear. Yeah. Oh, like, well, I tell you what, I tell you, we're going to, we're going to be underwater on Bass Strait. Yeah. We're I'll, testing I'll, it hard. I will tell you in Hobart, I'll, yeah. look, I tell you what, if the Zike gear keeps me dry in heavy downwind on a TP-52, where you're basically, look, you're, you're either underwater or in a, in a storm of seawater. If it actually keeps... Snorkel's required. Oh, look at his snorkel. I will tell you what, no, I'll, I'll let you know, but uh, look, I'm, I'm actually not convinced that any gear in the world can keep you dry in a TP52. But, but Zyke's giving it their best shot, and I will let you know in Hobart. Can you please wait? My, my bet is I'll be a bit damp, but, but that'll, that, that'll be a good result. I think you'll be a bit damp, but I think I'll be able to throw a rum at you. And it will make you wetter than you are. I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be that, that's what, about, about the only reason you do this silly race <laughs> is after you've beaten your head against a brick wall for a couple of days, the, yeah. the first run's pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Well, we will chat in Hobart, yeah, mister. Will. I hope you have a fantastic run yeah. to Tasman Light. Yes. And uh, from Tasman Light on, in God we trust. Exactly, awesome. Well, good luck to you and well done on last year. Thank I mean, you. I don't want, I mean, we're talking about this year and I know you're such a nice guy and you're saying, you know, look at Chinese Whisper and mm. look at Ichiban and da 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 da. But, um, we won't forget this one. Oh, but look, particularly, look, if, 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 it's, if it's one of the nicest Hobarts we've had in a long time, that, that's actually not good for us. Mm. Uh, but in a tough old boat, I mean, don't forget, we are going to hit a southerly. Mm. That southerly may, may compress a bit yet. Mm. Uh, heavy downwind, as you know, is hard on gear and rigging. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't believe we'll have a gear failure. We're yeah. a tough old boat. When we hit a decent southerly, um, she's a tough old boat. We'll get, I believe we'll get through it. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to be in Hobart. And funnily enough, if we've done well, it means it's got really rough out there, OK? But if, if it's relatively comfortable sailing, the lightweight boats have got to beat us. Yeah, but, yeah. but you never know. I, I, the, the chances of us getting to Hobart in, in relatively nice weather, that just doesn't sound right to me. I reckon something will go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you want something to go wrong, really? Well, weather, 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 weather wise, yeah, look, a bit of 50 knots on the nose. Um, I don't think we're going to get it. Uh, but that, that actually is good for my tough old girl, yeah. Awesome. Excellent. Well, good luck, Paul. Thank you. Go smash it. Yeah, well, there we go. Go shake it. Yeah. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Okay. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, kicking into our Rolex Sydney Hobart coverage brought to you by Zark. Now, Phil. You're heading south on the first Korean entry ever, ever. in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. How exciting. Ever. Yeah, well, it's good. I wasn't going two days ago. I was going to have a break. <laughs> so I've been roped in only because I go to Korea quite a lot doing a martial art. Ooh. And uh, so they thought I might speak Korean, but I don't. <laughs> but no, it's good. They're good guys. They've done a lot of sailing, but not here. Yeah, yeah. sure. Now, we, we all want to know about the fun stories on board because sailing is about so much more than just the racing. I mean, how fun must this opportunity be? Well, it's always fun for us, and we've got a, one Kiwi, so we're trying to encourage the Koreans to abuse the Kiwi, because there's one Australian and I, and they don't get it, they, they don't do it, because they're very polite, they're very polite. We've got one guy, Han, he, he's really good, very enthusiastic, he's done a round the world race, and another guy, Andrew, who's chartered the boat, he speaks perfect English, the others are a bit marginal in English, so we've got a communication issue, but we're saying abuse the Kiwi, abuse the Kiwi. <laughs> 
and they won't. They're too polite. They're too polite. We said when in Australia you have to be not polite. This is different, <laughs> but they can't. It's too cultural. It's so cultural. Japanese, Koreans, they've all got that ingrained just loveliness about them. Oh, yeah, they're, they're lovely people. And I know them from my time over there. Oh. The people I deal with over there in, in the thing I do there, yeah. um, they don't sail. So this is a whole oh, different cool. different group. We're, Best of both worlds. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so for them too. Excellent. Now, the boat Sonic is? It's a TP-52. It's one of the earlier ones, so it's a little heavier than the new ones. It's not... It's a good boat. TPs are all good boats, but it's not super hot like Balance and yeah. everything that's been modified. Um, I've sailed on Ragamuffin a lot, the TP, mm -hmm. and it's pretty fast. But this is... This is good, but, yeah. you know, we haven't all sailed together. We're, we're not... You know, we're learning. Yeah. So it's a, a bit of a learning race for us all together, I think. But one of the best classes to go in, it seems. It's a, got its own little one design fleet. Well kind of, within the overall fleet too. Yeah, that's that's good and bad. It's, well, for us it's bad because all the other ones have sailed together for years and, and they're hot. And, and yeah, <laughs> and we be, might be struggling to match with them, I think, uh, in reality. But on the other hand, it gives a lot of other boats to look at and see, you know, and, and uh, sort of place ourselves amongst. So excellent, we're, excellent. we're not thinking we're going to kick their ass or knock them all off. Well, but, some uh, of the words that you need to learn in Korean, I think, are cheers for when you make it to yeah, Customs House. Right, yeah. No, How are we going with that one? Well, I told that we had a Korean dinner last night and I asked the uh, skipper and, and Han, what's the most dangerous part of the race? And they said, oh, weather or maybe Bass Strait. I said, no, no, wrong. No, uh, um, Spinnaker. I said, no, no, after the finish is the most dangerous part of the race. I said, why? I said, that's very dangerous for 48 hours. No sleep in the pub. Sticky feet. Oh, no, it's very dangerous. Oh, so, oh, we're good. Yeah, they're, so they're good for that. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I hope you have a fantastic race. Okay. I hope everything stays together for you, and I hope you learn. What were you saying in the press conference? I think it was in, out, up, up down. down. Yeah, I hope so, yeah, in, out, up, down. This going through my sleep, in, out, up, down. Yeah, but I hope, Santa. I, I hope it's going through their sleep. <laughs> they'll, they'll learn those words very quickly this come this afternoon. This afternoon. This afternoon. Okay, cool. That's what it's we're going it, for. All over it. Well done, Phil. I'll okay. talk to you This is Nick Douglas from Adventures of a Sailor wow. Girl. Thank you for joining us at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. You can see here, this is the surrounds of this lovely little village at the CYC. Here come some blackjack boys. Howdy. 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 Hi, Nick. Hi, Squawk. Hi, Nick. Hi, Squawk. We'll play his interview a little bit later. But right here, we've got the primitive cool guys. Uh, they seem to be just getting their spinnaker ready. And we will be chatting to them in just a second, actually, as soon as they're um, under control, <laughs> just to keep you up to date with some of the preparations. And over here in the distance, you can see the mass pit around Donna Hay. She's a local uh, cooking celebrity in Sydney, and she's going south on Bo Jest. We actually spoke to Bo Jest a little earlier. We spoke to Jim Gale, who's the navigator on board Bo Jest. And if you didn't hear from Jim, it does look like the forecast has diminished substantially. And it's going to be a, a downwind sled ride, but not nearly as windy as they were forecasting earlier in the week, which is great news because it means I don't need to change my flights. <laughs> but for those who may have just joined us, my name's Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. And this is our pre-game show for the Rolex Sydney Hobart in 2016. Brought to you by Zyke. We're just watching these guys fold this spinnaker. Can't. You can't. They are very close, like literally in front of us. I can't really get much lower than this. <laughs> But what we might do now is, is cut to an interview that, I've, um, that we've got waiting. Uh, speaking of development and speaking about things that are going on and speaking about getting ready, ready last minute, we know that the boys from CQS, Sir Robert Hintz, who is the cousin of Luda Ingeval, who owns Nicorette, now CQS. It has won the Hobart before online honours. I'm acting as camera woman as well now. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we will um, go to the interview with CQS. Now stay tuned because there is a bit of a boat tour as well. You'll get to see the foils. I know everybody's been waiting to see the foils. There is a rotating canard on board as well. They've extended it from 90 feet to 100, which is just fantastic. So absolutely incredible to be at the Birkenhead Point Marina a few days ago and to jump on board CQS, but also to talk to Sir Robert Hintzy. It's his first Hobart going with his veteran cousin, Luda Ingeval. So let's cut to that interview now and we'll be straight back with the Primitive Cool Boys right here from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. This is 
Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl with your Rolex Sydney Hobart pre-game show brought to you by Zyke. See you in action. We've got Sir Michael Hins and also Luda Ingeval, no stranger to the sport of sailing. How fantastic to see you here and almost time to go south. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited. <laughs> that is fantastic to see. And Luda, I mean, no stranger to the sport. You've managed to rope your cousin into the action. How does it feel to almost be at the starting line? Well, we uh, would like the starting line to come up about a month from now. But, that would be uh, ideal. Yeah, <laughs> but no, we, we're, we're looking forward to it. Uh, you know, the start of Sydney Hobart to me is one of the biggest uh, sport experiences you could ever have. You feel very privileged, privileged to have so many people watching live yeah. on the beaches and every spot that we can see, you know, with the binoculars, there's people, people, people everywhere. So I look forward to the start and I feel, feel that uh, it's going to be a very exciting day. Yeah, in, indeed. And, and as you mentioned, it's, it's an amazing opportunity to race in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. But CQS, what an amazing opportunity to really take our sport to another level. Thrown in the deep end, though, um, in, in another month, what do you think you could have maybe achieved, if I, if I could give you that on your Santa wish list? Well, we, we're simply just going through a testing process and testing procedure, mm -hmm. and uh, every day we go out, we learn something. So, um, I mean, personally, I think we'll be struggling to be at 90% of the boat's potential at this starting line. It will take us probably about six weeks to get in the high 90s, mm -hmm. and uh, sorry, six months probably more yeah. than that. And so, uh, but the question is, when is she fast enough? And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll know a lot more when we get to Hobart. Maybe you'll never know when she's fast enough. I mean, the potential, yeah, the potential with this technology is quite large. Well, there are a lot of toys in the in the in the tool bag now, and uh, we just got to learn how to use them efficiently. Excellent. Now, it's your first time doing the Rolex Sydney Hobart. It certainly is. It's, uh, it's my first time doing a lot of things here. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel? I mean, are you, are you asking any important questions? What are the important questions you're trying to ask? Well, the, the first important question is uh, how, how safe are we? And of course, we're very, very safe. I mean, yes. there's no question about that. But I mean, look, I, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm also apprehensive. I've never done anything like this. Excellent. And I mean, it's his first time. Is it nice seeing the race through your cousin's eyes? Absolutely. Now, the, the excitement for me is two things. One, I'm doing it with my cousin. Yeah. Um, our lives have intertwined in a beautiful way through this project. Uh, Mike is very keen on, on technology and understands a lot of it. So the entire design and build process, we've been on the phone a lot. We met up a few times. And, and every time I explain the technologies we're going to put in this boat, Mike understands it, he gets it and gets excited. And, and, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, the race is an amazing race and we got a really fantastically interesting boat. We're going to learn. I feel like a child again. Yeah. You know, I'm in here with something that is going to teach us a completely new way of sailing. And that is absolutely incredible. I know I've got to wrap you up because you're incredibly popular in Sydney at the moment. But thank you so much for the opportunity to meet you both and, and for bringing this amazing boat to the race because it's definitely added an extra element. It's incredible fun. Yeah. Incredible fun. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Awesome. Well, good luck on Boxing Day. Thank you, you and your audience for all the interest. We oh, really appreciate it. It makes us feel very special. That's amazing. And, and likewise, good luck. And I'll see you in Hobart. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I hope so. That, that, that's, <laughs> the, that's the plan. That's, that's the, the plan. plan. That's, that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Good Thank you. Thank you. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl live from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia for your Rolex Sydney Hobart 2016 pre-game show brought to you by Zach with me. I have some fantastic guests. I've spoken to them both previously on different occasions, however, but you're both sailing with Primitive Cool. Fantastic to see. How are you going, Eric? Yeah, really good. Yeah, really good. And P.S., how are you doing? Yep, I'm really excited for the race. Yeah, yep, very. I'm really excited because I appear to be taller than you in this frame <laughs> and that's what I like to see. <laughs> what do you think, guys? I think I need a booster seat all the time. This is great. But anyway, going south, primitive cool. You've done it a few times because you were on, bo on board last year. So you, have you sailed together since last year's Hobart? Yeah, so after Hobart last year, we started sailing on Team Maverick, the Infinity 46. Ah. And Pierce has joined us on that. And so we've been racing it with each other pretty much all year. Excellent. And so a few races there. I, I know that you did the Rolex Middle Sea race. Yeah, so Maverick has just launched this spring, so this is really, we've done four races, and we did the Middle Sea race and the Transat, mm -hmm. and uh, boats are starting to come together. We had a good performance in both those races. That's excellent. And, and Pierce, because you're new to the campaign, though you've sailed with Eric before, you know, good experience? How do you like it? Are you ever coming back to Australia? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I'm really, really pleased. It's been a real joy to sail both last year on Primitive Cool with Eric, um, which is the first first race that I did with him, and then subsequently in, in Team Maverick, it's been, I think, you know, it's been a real real pleasure to be involved in both these, these programs. Yeah, excellent. And, 
Yeah, the last time I, I caught up with you was actually at Cows Week and you were sailing a Figaro. Yeah. So single-handed, team sailing, you're doing it all, mate. Yeah, no, pretty busy. I mean, not really any of this, any stuff in the Figaro much, but we've just just taken on a campaign for the Tour de France Hull of Wild, which are in the in the multi hull, which we're really excited about as well. Um, which Eric's also sailed a bit on um, in the training with us. So <laughs> you guys seem to have a bit of a bromance going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to find good help. So I think people you can rely on. So. <laughs> Don't you love chatting with me, Pierce? Oh, yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> no, no, but really, the Primitive Cool team, you guys are such a tight-knit bunch. I think last year I spent most of my time in Hobart hanging out on your boat on the beanbags, all the vibe that you guys have going. It's pretty awesome. Great team. Yeah, I think that's why we keep on coming back because the people we sail with, and this is my third time with Primitive Cool. Awesome. So, yeah, definitely enjoy it. Yeah, well, well that's, that's why we do this, and I think that must be what makes you guys uh, turn right out of the heads because I think you're all crazy. <laughs> Oh, well, this year looks pretty fast. We've had bad luck, good luck sort of thing, and <laughs> this year just like should be fast and fun. Excellent. Yeah, no, it should be fast and fun, and good for you guys too, that, you know, the 42-foot range, 52-foot range. 51. 51-foot range. <laughs> I'm like, three, two, one, guess it. I can't know, but, I mean, it's looking like it's going to be that mid-50s down to the mid-40, maybe 40.7 range. I think our division is going to do really well. Mm. Um, there's a lot of TP52s and big handicap range, and we're right in the middle, which isn't always ideal. Yeah. But I think someone in our division is probably going to do pretty well. Yeah. The, last year, how did you guys go? Uh, we were doing good. We got second in our division and fourth overall. And, you know, we could have done a little bit better, but, you know, balance got us in the end. Uh, yeah. So we're looking for a try again this year. Were you 10th across, across the line last year or around that position? Which you, yeah, I think, I think you guys are really, really happy with where you finished. So is it, is it hard sometimes when you come back to do a big race like this and you meet your expectations, knowing that sometimes you're not always going to be able to reach that expectation again? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, that the, the 52 class or IRC ones is really competitive and it's really great to be able to race in, in probably, I mean, one of the most competitive divisions of the race. And I think you've got to contextualise that when you're looking at your results for next year and just remember there's a lot of brilliant boats and... Um, the fact that we've got such good competition is something to be pretty grateful for as well. Yeah, awesome. And what are your polos looking like? Do you have an estimated time now? I mean, the weather's changed so much over the week. I've already spoken about it a little bit um, so far in this show, but I think we were like record breaking, not record breaking, big southerly, not big southerly, running all the way, not running all the way. I mean, what do you think? I mean, you've done a lot of sailing solo and double handed, and you are a pretty fairly good navigator and meteorologist. And meteorologist, yeah, and and we and we think that he's fairly fairly good on the on the on the um, charts. So I'm asking you right here, right now, Eric, what's the go? Well, for our fleet, I think the goal is to get in before the Derwent shuts down on Wednesday. So we have kind of all Wednesday afternoon to, to come in. If we can do that, I think our fleet will be in great shape if we miss it and start shutting down because I think Wednesday night is going to really slow down. So I'm hoping that the slower boats will start suffering after yeah. that. I think that seems to be the primary goal in the Rolex Sydney Hobart is to beat the Tasman, uh, the Derwent shutdown rather. Yeah, I think I've, I've been hearing a saying, I heard it last year as well, that it's uh, we're, we all go from here and we, we just get to the next start line at... Uh, at the pod in up the Derwent, so we're all just on our way to another race in Hobart, and then it all starts again. So that's a, that's a good way of thinking about it. I'm trying to pin. I'm um, like this is this is my token phrase for this year. It's not the Rolex Sydney to Hobart. It's the Rolex Sydney to Tasman Light and Pray. What do you yeah. think about that? Well, I've lost the Hobart <laughs> overall in the Derwent, as many people have, sort of thing. So I know how painful it can be, yeah. and uh, anything you can do to avoid that. Excellent. Well, I hope you guys happen to time it right this year, but no doubt you'll put yourselves in the best position to take advantage of whatever situations fall in front of you. So. <laughs> Thank you very much, and no hope worries. to see you in Hobart. Yeah, I, I'll see you in Hobart. I've got to get on those beanbags. Yeah, exactly. Another champagne breakfast for you down there. <laughs> so for those who saw last year's wrap of the Rolex Sydney Hobart, yeah. I'm pouring my champagne. <laughs> <laughs> can you supply the champagne too? That'd be great. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, all right. Well, we better wrap up with these guys. <laughs> we better wrap up with you guys, and if um, and, and good luck, and I hope all your prep goes well. I mean, we we saw just before the CQS interview, these boys still packing their spinnaker, so a bit late in the game. <laughs> no, we're just picking what sails to use for the race. Yeah, no, that's actually a big call, isn't it? I think picking the sails, it, it does change the weight a lot. And speaking of weight and speaking of, of sails making a big difference, we're going to go to an interview now with Mark Rico Richards from Wild Oats. That's their biggest decision that they have to make 
today. Uh, the, the biggest decision that Mark has to make today, and he was talking to me about the other day, is that the, the sales on board Wild Oats, they're tr trialling a new 3DI, there is a little bit of weight involved, and their big decisions come Boxing Day were going to be what sales to take and what sales to leave behind. So we'll, um, we'll swap to that interview with Mark Richards as soon as we get there. And in the meantime, boys, all the best with your travels, and, um, and thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you very much. No worries. Thanks, Nick. It's a pleasure. Cheers, thanks, Piers. <laughs> <laughs> Starring role from Rob Douglas, our uh, behind the scenes marketing. <laughs> Douglas for Adventures and Managing Director Man. Rico, I think the skipper um, of Wild Oats. Almost time to go south yet again. Yeah, no, it's come up, come up quick. It's amazing, you know, two more sleeps, but it's uh, exciting. The forecast is looking favourable for everyone and mm -hmm. not going to be as tough a race as, as what we originally thought, which is good for the whole fleet. But, um, yeah, no, I just can't wait to get out there. Yeah, I can't wait for you guys to get out there too because nobody sees the, the lead up. Everyone sees the start, but they don't see the lead up and all the effort that goes in behind it. It's such a relief to get on the water. Yeah, no, it really is. And it's a huge, it's a huge commitment from all, every owner, every, every team, every crew. Um, you know, the hours that go into the preparation for this race is, is huge, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, so it is, it's really satisfying to actually get out, out, out of the starting blocks on, on Boxing Day and uh, start strutting your stuff, you know. And um, I just, I'm really excited. I think the boat's going really well. Um, all the boats. So it's going to be it's going to be a really interesting race. I think it really is going to be. And I mean, we we just spoke about it in the press conference inside, which you can see on my Facebook page. But the fact that all of these maxis have different pluses, different minuses. Everyone's going to be in their own, you know, at different times of the race. Yeah, that's for sure. And it's um, you know, it's a funny thing with these big boats. You know, sail wardrobe is so important to get yeah. right. But you know, this, the sails are so heavy on these boats that you know, leaving one or two sails behind can be a big benefit as well. So. Mm. That's the next dilemma over the next 48 hours is actually working out you know, what wardrobe we're going to take and um, you know, we'll see what happens on Boxing Day. Yeah, because I think I've, I've heard rumours that you guys have the new 3DI which weigh quite a bit. Is that true? No, they're, well, they're very light for, for, for what they are, but it's, yeah. it, you know, the sails are just big. You know, every yeah. sail weighs 200 kilos, so you know, mm. you've got you know, 10 sails on board and you've got two tonne of sails. So it's a big deal, but it's, um, and it's sort of, yeah, the thing with these boats, if you don't have the right sail on board yeah. for the conditions, it can be, you know, it can be not slower. So. Yeah. It's a tough decision. That is a really tough decision, but at least everything else is in order, and that's the only big one to make before Boxing Day. That's, that's it, and how much food we take. <laughs> and water. That's right. <laughs> do, you, do you have a, um, I mean, I know the times keep changing, and we thought that you guys might be within record-breaking activity. Do you, do you know ETAs at the moment? No, look, I don't even think about that stuff. It's, yeah. It just all depends on Mother Nature. You know, it looks like we're going to get some really stiff northerlies down the east coast of Tassie, and, and you know, these boats can start you know, averaging 25 to 30 knots very quickly. So. Yeah. You cheer the miles up real quick, but you know we'll see. Time will tell. I'm only really asking because I'm flying on the afternoon of the 27th, and I want to make sure I'm there in time. No, you, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be fine. We won't, we won't, we won't be f finished before midnight. Awesome. All right, mate. Well, good luck. All the best to you. We'll all be thinking of Bob come the start, but for the entire race, no doubt. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. No Merry, Merry Christmas. No, Merry Christmas to you. Welcome back to the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. It was fantastic as always to catch up with Mark Rico Richards from Wild Oats. I know that they will be sailing for Bob today come 1pm and uh, I think that the forecast is going to suit them as well because they will be able to run pretty hard in front of that nor'easter. And it's very warm here. It is going to build as the day progresses and uh, it's going to be a really interesting race I think because we'll, we'll see... The TP52 is doing really well, and apparently I need to move over just a little bit, so I'll do that. But um, the, the TP52 is all the way through. Uh, the range are really going to enjoy that downwind ride, and this is one of the Hobarts where you go, geez, I wish I went this year, because <laughs> they're not going to get too hard by a southerly. But, uh, but speaking about southerlies and speaking about very, very experienced sailors who have done a lot of Hobarts and seen a lot of different conditions, we're going to go to an interview with Adrian Carlin. This year is her 25th Hobart. She's the first female to do so, which is absolutely incredible. And, uh, and I really find her inspiring, as do so many other females I know in this sport. There's lots of other females close to achieving what Adrian has achieved, though. It's great to see, you know, there's, I think Vanessa Dudley has 19 or 20, and there's plenty of females coming up through the ranks. Stacey Jackson, who we heard from earlier in the show, who is uh, the boat captain and the uh, crew boss of the RP66 Alive, who sailed with Team SCA, is coming up to her ninth. So there's lots of up-and-coming females, which is just fantastic to see. So Adrian Cahalan, 25 Hobarts. She sailed on Wild Oats. She sailed on plenty of Maxis. Last year she was with Itchy Barn. This year she's with the Ragamuffin TP52. 
I mean, you don't have that traditional Christmas day where you're sitting down to a big lunch. And in yeah. fact, now that they've forecast the southerly, definitely won't be sitting down to a big lunch. It'll just be a bite-sized piece of salad. But, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's always exciting. And, and that, all that hype leading up to the race, what's it going to be? How much running? How much southerly? You know, once you're in that swept up in it, it's, it's great. Yeah, no, it's absolutely incredible, and and for yourself, the balancing act is is no um it, it, you know stranger to it. Twenty five Hobarts, you're coming up to the first, one of the first females to do it, I believe. Yeah, look, that's that's great for women in the sport. I mean, I'm the I'm coming in for the twenty fifth, but there's lots of girls behind me on their twentieth, yeah. twenty first, and that's what keeps me going because I know they're <laughs> right behind me. <laughs> I want to get there before them. <laughs> Not competitive at all. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, and, you know, I'm really proud of, you, you know, just it mirrors society in the way that uh, women have now got the opportunity to do what they want to do, which they didn't otherwise have. And, and it just makes the people who were there before us even greater pioneers, you know, because uh, we've got a lot in our favour these days. But the, the girls that did the race in the early days, they were real groundbreakers. Yeah, definitely. And, and you're, you've always been a groundbreaker. And it's not like you're just going south as a figurehead either, you know, you're in there, you're in the pit, you're navigating, I've seen you in action and you're going in one of the most competitive sections of the race with the TP52. The TPs are great boats, they're, um, they're fun, you know, they're like dinghies and yeah. they, uh, they also, um, you know, you've got a really competitive fleet around you so you, it's in the race you get to see other boats yeah. often. Um, you try not to look at the tracker too much because otherwise that's, you know, it, it can be distracting, it can be informative but it can be distracting yeah. so you've got to sort of balance that and also balance it for the morale with the crew too. Yeah. Sometimes too much information can again be, you know, distracting as you say. Um, so yeah, I love the TPs, you know, they're, they're easy as a little person to, to pick the gear up. Yeah. Um, but I do miss the hundreds as well. I, I really enjoy that because being at the front of the fleet, um, it's very, very exciting. There's a lot of pressure, um, but the rewards are great. Yeah, no, that's absolutely awesome. And it's nice to see Ragamuffin represented in the race too. Yeah, look, this is my first time in the Fisher compound. It's really exciting. It's a real milestone because uh, the Fishers have been a part of this race for such a long time. And we're there with Brenton and the, the, his team, the tactician Clinton and, and Joe and sailing with Sue again, Larry Jamison. We've got a really great team. We've got 15 on board, so it's going to be crowded. But that's, that's, but that's the formula we think need we need. Well, we will we'll be happy to have them in the Southern League, yeah, no doubt about that. Excellent. Well, it's great to see. And, it's, you know, I was just thinking about it. You know, I'm, I'm in Sid Fisher's camp for the first time. You've sailed with Wild Oats. You've sailed with Itchy Barn. You've sailed with so many of the skiffers around the fleet. That's just... It just blinds, it blows my mind. Well, I've been, I've been given a lot of opportunities yeah. and um, it's always nice to be asked. It's always nice to be involved and to be part of the team and I never take that for granted. I think everybody who knows you, though, would think that it's an honour to have you as a part of their team. So good luck heading south. Well done to her little angels who have been sitting around here while you've been talking to everybody. I'm going to pay a lot of ice creams right now. <laughs> Merry Santa. Christmas. Yeah. Santa. Merry Christmas. Adrian. Thanks, Nicole. No worries. Awesome. Welcome back, guys, to the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. We're live for your Rolex Sydney Hobart 2016 pre-game show. Absolutely incredible to actually finally have everything working now that the Wi-Fi's settled down and the technology's settled down. And next to me, a great man has settled down. Dennis, thanks for joining me. That's no problems, Nick. <laughs> uh, always a pleasure to come and talk to you. Oh, no, it's always great to see you. Now, Dennis is the PR. So, you know, a good beating start, like a, like a normal dinghy race. Excellent. We like the dinghy races. We were talking about this off camera just before. He asked me if I was on a rib and I said, no, I don't like getting wet unless I'm sailing because I tend to sail the smaller boats. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there'll be too much uh, water over the decks for the uh, fleet going south either. I think... Um Maybe they might get a splash going out of the harbour, but after that, I don't think it'll be anything. Yeah, it should be fairly good. I'm actually a little bit regretful that I'm not doing Hobart this year, Dennis, because I could probably stay dry the whole way. Yeah, I think you could do it in your carpet slippers, actually. <laughs> it would be perfect. Absolutely awesome. But you know what else is perfect? I really like that you're sitting next to me for this interview because the last time that I tried to interview oh, yeah. was during the live broadcast of the Solis Big Boat Race. And no joke, we were on the Pantaneous Sail and Motor Yacht Insurance rib. Thank you guys for giving me the rib. But Dennis is on, on the start boat for the CYCA and literally the interview was like... 
Something like that, what do you reckon? It was, and going apart, I think I've got long arms trying to hold on to you, so yeah. I know. Yeah, it's much more civilised. It's so civilised, as it should be for the Rolex Sydney Hobart, but it's great to see you come back again. How many races have you started now, Dennis? Uh, for the Hobart? I, I, not, in, not in general, <laughs> just the Hobart. The Hobart, I, I think this is about the fifth one. The fifth yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, excellent. Fifth or sixth, yeah. I, I can't count. So. Something about the Hobart, though. Yeah, there is. Uh, it's... Um, it's a bit like the Melbourne Cup horse race. It, it's the one day of the year where everyone becomes an expert on yachting <laughs> and everybody's out there watching. So, you know, it, it, it's great. I, I love that. Yes, I'm an expert. I'm not sure I'm going to pull off the expert status, <laughs> but I'll do my best to talk to some of the finest experts that we have around in sailing, that's for sure. We've already had some crackers on the show today, Dennis. We've, oh, had, we've had Adrian, we've Adrian Cullen, yes. we've had Mark Richards, we've had yeah. Luda Ingeval. It's good, all the Northern Beaches people. All the Northern Beaches people. How good has the traffic been this week, Dennis? Oh, we were talking about this earlier. The traffic on Military Road, for those Sydneyites that will know what we're talking about, Military Road, usually it takes us, what, an hour to get into At the city? At least an hour. At least an hour. I did it in 25 minutes the other day. Yeah, I was about 25 minutes this morning, so yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was great. So while there's going to be a traffic jam out there on the water, we're all going to get home in record time. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Well, thank you, Dennis, as always, for stopping by. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Good luck out there today, mate. Good one. Thank you, Nick. And uh, we'll have a good one, I'm sure. Yeah, we will. And I'll yeah. see you in Hobart. Uh, I'm not going to Hobart. Gonna... I won't see you in Hobart. I'm going to stay home and watch the cricket. <laughs> the other great thing to do at this time of year. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Well, um, Dennis, I'll catch up with you. We might pop to an interview. I was thinking about all the pre-records that we still have in the bag and I think that one that we might have ready to go. What have we got? No, no pressure at all. <laughs> Especially with the forecast. This is Victor Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the U-Box boat, a Cooks and 50, actually a chartered boat by this fantastic team. And uh, our owner is, is with us and it, it is a Chinese team. Are you excited to do this race for the first time? Very excited. <laughs> it's a great race. It's now a great boat after Shao prepared it very well. Excellent. And, and with us, Charles, who he's re referring to, Charles Crogelia from the Dongfong Ocean Racing Team of the Last Global Ocean Race, here for the Hobart. Nice to see you in Sydney. Yes, I'm a very happy. First time for me or so. so oh, really? Yeah. Awesome, so we have two uh, rookies to the race. Exactly. Shao is the first time for you two. First time too. First time, first time, excellent. But I know that you have done a little bit more ocean racing, uh, given that you've done a few Volvo ocean races now. Uh, yes, I did two Volvo ocean races, and the last one with the Dongfeng race team, and we go for the next one with the yes. same team. Yes, which is very, very exciting to see. Now, the, the Rolex Sydney Hobart, have you always wanted to do it? I mean, a lot of people sometimes, it, it gets a little bit petered out in the mainstream. You know, Rolex Sydney Hobart's so important. Volvo Ocean Race, maybe down here, which is not maybe the way it should be. <laughs> no, no, but it's a very old race, and uh, I heard about it, but I'm from Europe, so I do the Rolex last yes. night race, but yes. uh, it's a long time I wanted to come in the, in the, in the winter, because it's a winter in France yes. now, and we are very happy to sail another sun. It's summer. <laughs> indeed, indeed. We are, we are in a beautiful part of the world. Have you been to Sydney before? You like Sydney, Ma? Yes. Yes, you have been to Sydney before. Are you racing with the team or will you meet the team in Hobart? Uh, he said this time you want to compete or do you want to go to the port to them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, it's a shout <laughs> call. <laughs> what do you is think? Is he allowed? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's his call. He's, uh, he's welcome on board. It's yes. his boat, so he can come. Huh? <laughs> I think I think with the forecast and being on a Cooks and 50, this could be a good year. <laughs> yes, I think so. But yeah, he can come. Sure. <laughs> he's, he's a good sailor. He's been he said he knows you're very good, 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 very uh, perhaps next time, because the, the team actually is fully prepared. Ah, uh -huh, so probably next time the team is fully prepared. And and what a great a great man to lead them. So the team, uh, who have you got on board going south with each other? Uh, we have got six guys from U-Box, which uh -huh. are the U-Box team. And uh, we, uh, we have six guys from my team. Uh, one of them was in the last two of them, actually. Yes. One Chinese guy, who was in the rookie on the last... On the, 
That's what was your race. Thomas, Thomas Moxel, which is a French guy who was part of my team. Jackson Boutel, an Australian guy, local people. Yay! He was also with us, but he did only one leg. And we have two people who we are testing for the next one. A girl and a French guy. Aha, uh -huh. so there we go, maybe a girl on the... On the yes, we have two. <laughs> yes, exactly, which is a good thing. Good, good to see, but... But that said, I mean, a great team and a great boat, the Cookson 50. Uh, historically, it's done very well in this race. Yes, it can be, it can do very well. Is we are going to fight against the TP52, I think, and uh, the other Cookson 50. Mm -hmm. The weather forecast is not so bad for us. Yeah, looking good. Ooh, yeah, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see. see. Hey, we'll excellent. Best. Yes, as, as you have to do in ocean racing, the Rolex Sydney Hobart yeah. can sometimes be a race of patience right, as okay. opposed to skill, right. but hopefully your team has good luck. Yeah. I said, because in Sydney Hobart, there are many times you need to have enough patience to complete the race, especially when it's close to the last race, the last race. So, he said, this is also the luck of the whole race. I believe our race is the luck of the race. I believe the luck of the race is the luck of the race. He believes the luck on this boat, also he believes the luck on Xiao. Excellent. Luck on, luck on Charles, definitely. And I wish you both the best in luck. How do I, how do I say good luck in Chinese? Chu hao ying. Ha ha. Chu hao ying. Chu hao. Excellent. No worries. Excellent. Good luck, guys. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, near, far, wide, young, old, all of the others, everyone that loves sailing, everyone that doesn't. Hopefully there are a few non-sailors tuning in to hear about what all this craziness is where we head out to a starting line at 1pm on Boxing Day, head out the heads, hang a right and head down to the Derwent. That's it. That's all, <laughs> all there is to it. And um, fortunately with the forecast, even the worst sailor in the world, uh, not mentioning <laughs> me and my crew, but... Um, with the wind behind us, you know, we have to go go far south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Shane, you've done it a few times. You're one of the most experienced, but you're the most optimistic person in the fleet, I think. Yeah, well, that's true. And uh, <laughs> we um, we are so, um, pretty confident. I'm, you know, I've even uh, picked the, the crew time that we have to finish by 8.30 on Thursday night, the, right. uh, the 29th, because that way we break Pied Piper's record from 1975 for Perfect. the first boat under 11 metres, yeah. And, uh, yeah, just, just take that into account, under 11 metres. Ah, uh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> and at first, um, they, they were, you know, my crew was very, you know, doomsday soothsayers, but uh, they're slowly drinking the Kool-Aid and starting to think, oh, maybe he's not that far off. So, um, um, yeah, it's all doable. They're coming on board. That's right, yeah. And, um, and even our navigator who's very gloomy at the best of times <laughs> and uh, even he we've got a maybe out of him so that's really good have you picked out your Rolex uh, well <laughs> I'll probably get some help from my wife because she'll pick the most expensive one they got <laughs> and, uh, but I don't think I'll ever get to wear it because um, she'll probably pick the ladies watch I suppose and, uh, uh, but you know what I think any Rolex would go very 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 nicely with Kimatsu Azuru Oh, yeah, they'll be really happy, um, <laughs> especially seeing I've got to go and have a meeting with them after um, this Hobart about the, um, the Melbourne Osaka race. So, oh. so we really need to do well in this one so I can um, tell, them, tell them why they should heavily they invest in the little S&S 34. Yeah, well, that would be fantastic. I have to say, there's quite a few people in this fleet who are looking at doing the Melbourne to Osaka race. We've, we've heard from uh, the two girls that are heading, and we've got John Bacon is thinking about doing it, and you're thinking about doing it. We could have the biggest, biggest fleet ever. Yeah, well, that, just just mentioning those two girls, uh, Joe Breen and uh, yes. Svetlanka, I think. Svetlana. Svetlana. Um, they ca they got an S&S 34 as well. Yeah. And they came and had a look on um, Azuro yesterday and they said, ours doesn't look like this one. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to them about it actually and I'm like, you realise that Azuro is like the hottest boat in the fleet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she was taking photos of everything, so I, I should have... Um, yeah, got that camera off her before she left. But um, no, no, she, 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 it'll be good to have, um, you know, if she can get hers yeah. anywhere. We, we've had ours two, two years now mm. and still improving. So um, uh, she's got a bit of a hard, uh, you know, a tight schedule yeah, yeah. To, uh, to get it all done in one year now, what we've done in two. Um, but um, yeah, if she, if, you know, you've got to be keen to enter that race. So uh, um, she probably get it, get it, and then we'll have a good, uh, a good race all the way to Osaka. Well, that would be fantastic. But first and foremost, the Rolex Sydney Hobart for 2016. The most optimistic person on the planet, Shane Kearns. He pretty much has already written the history books and he's going to win. 
<laughs> that's right, and I'm still still sticking by it. I, I reckon we're a certainty. And um, and the punters apparently reckon that too, or they, they got Itchy Barn at $8 and us at 9 $9, mate? Yeah. You're all over it. Yeah, second favourite, so... Um, or is it because you're talking it up? Probably I'm talking it up, I think. <laughs> but uh, I, think it, I think it was a lot of small bets, so... Um, um, but yeah, we'll be doing our best no matter what, and um, and the boat's going great. So I, I've, I'm still pretty confident. It's been going great for a number of years, and what I'm going to get my my mum now to do, she's working so hard behind the camera here, guys, to make sure that you see all of these interviews. She's going to line up an interview for you with Hicko. Uh, this interview with Roger Hickman is also with Shane Kearns. It's from last year's launch, and this is the same time slot that we had Hicko's interview in last year. Right. And so um, I thought that I would play it in this time slot this year to commemorate the great man that was Roger Hicko of Wild Rose and also a great mate of Shane and also a great rival. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, um, I, I told the story when we won the uh, Gold Coast race in 2015 um, and and beat Hicko yeah. um, that I had Hicko's beat face. Hicko. Yeah. <laughs> And I, but I had Hiko's face on the inside of our spinny car as our motivation because he, he was the best. Yeah. And um, if we could get anywhere near him, we were happy. And um, so to finally actually beat him um, was a monumental thing. And, yeah, um, and, uh, yeah I'm, I'm just glad we had that last Hobart as well last year yeah. t- together. So Because um, you guys battled it out there as well. So, um, so we're, we're going to flick to that interview now. Thank you so much, Shane, no as always, for joining me. And good luck, mate. Okay, thanks. I want a Rolex. Uh, everybody <laughs> wants one. I've got to get one. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Cheers. A couple of gentlemen. You are. You I are. I am. Hicko. Almost time to give up that trophy. I know. You kind of wish that the race isn't going to start. I mean, maybe <laughs> we could postpone it for another two or three years so we could hang on to that mantle. But no, the thrill and the excitement of getting the next race underway, I can't wait. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah, to, to trade a, another month of being the winner to get it underway, <laughs> I think let's get it underway. That's absolutely awesome. Now, for those who may not know, Roger Hicko is the owner driver of Wild Rose, Wild Rose, who won last year the Tattersall's Cup, which is overall handicap basically, for the Rolex Sydney Hobart. That's right, yeah. The handicap is open to all the boats, all shapes and sizes, the big, the new, the old, the pretty, the ugly. Yeah. And so everyone can have a crack at the Tattersall's Trophy and um, we were lucky enough to, to score that last year. Yeah, I think you make your own luck just a little bit. But talking about pretty yachts, here on my right, one of my favourites from last year, Kenzie. Yeah. Oh my gosh, your boat has to be one of the hottest in the fleet, just over my shoulder, back yeah, here. thanks for that. A lot, <laughs> a lot of effort's gone into it and, uh, and they are a classic design anyway, so just, you know, all I really did was just tidy it all up and give it a nice coat of paint and uh, the lines of the boat, they've they're been the same since 1968. Absolutely stunning she is. Navy blue, my favourite. But she's quick too, I think. Uh, well, they're renowned as a safe boat, and yeah. um, but safe sort of means slow. Yeah. Um, so we've done a lot um, with uh, you know a lot of experts uh, mm-hmm. to actually increase its speed. And um, so now we hopefully we've got the right combination of uh, safe and fast. That said, you did re- win the Sydney to Gold Coast race. That's pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, well, uh, as Hicko. <laughs> Hic- very yeah. exciting. No, <laughs> look, we, Shane's been around the yachting for a long time and he's made this boat the most beautiful, picturesque, it's a the colour. Well, I, he makes me feel as if I need to t- tickle the rose up. But, um, <laughs> Navy blue all the way, Hicko. Next yeah. one. <laughs> and it's great, it's great. You know, the, we love the big boats, as we've said. We yeah. love them. Uh, but um, a lot of boats down at the smaller end of the fleet, they sail hard, they sail well. And we have a lot of camaraderie mm-hmm. and, and competitiveness at, at, all through the race. Yeah. 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 So, so that's the question. You two. Yeah. It could be all on again this year. Oh well, we we gauge ourselves of Hicko, who is the best. Yeah. And um and I joked in um, the Gold Coast race that we had Hicko's face on the inside of our spinnaker <laughs> as motivation, so none of us forgot what the, what the goal was, and uh, and he, and he did motivate us to get that win. So thank you, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's awesome to see. Maybe we'll have to get them to shake on it here. Yeah. Good luck to you, boys. I hope you could win, because if he wins, we might get a place, and if we win, you might get a place. Right, yeah, so, how, yeah. how good is that? That's yeah. why we love sailing, eh? <laughs> no, it'd be lovely to see uh, Shane win in, in yeah. such a beautiful boat. Really, yeah, no, really awesome. would. I'd be happy to see Hicko get second. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy to see you both make it safely to Hobart, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. I think, you know... It, you, firstly, you've got to get there. Mm. There's no question in, to, to win the Rolex Sydney Day, but you must get there. Yeah. The second thing you've got to do, you must win your division. Mm. 
and then if your division is favoured by lots of various things, then you have a chance of winning the Tattersall's Trophy. So winning your division is all important. So in actual fact, to win the Rolex Sydney to Hobart this year, we have to beat Shane, and he has to do thus. So it's a, it's a battle both ways. Well, there you go. I've spoken to Mark Richards today, yeah. and he's looking to go nice and quick on Wild Oats. We've spoken to these two, and we've got the how-to guide to win the Tattersall's Cup. I can't wait to be back here for the Big Vote Race and then the Rolex Sydney Hobart live here from the well, about 9am in the morning, I reckon, Hicko. Yeah, it starts to happen. It <laughs> yeah. starts to get the places packed. Exactly. It's awesome. But, uh, but that's it for me here at the CYC today. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> awesome. Oh, welcome back, guys. Amazing memories there. That was an interview with Shane Kearns and Roger Hicko Hickman that I did last year in the lead up to the Rolex Sydney Hobart for 2015. Unfortunately, Hicko is no longer with us. He did win the Tattersalls Cup in 2014. It was amazing to see him take that win. And a shout out to Sandy Eastman, who I know will be watching. He goes lovely partner, and she's also one of the sponsors of this broadcast. Growing Teams is her business. Absolutely. Fantastic work that she's doing there. So I, I do want to make a shout out. Of, I've, I've mentioned Harkin and B&G a number of times, our champions. Of course, Zyke, our legends, our friends who are helping us put this entire broadcast together. But we do have a lot of supporters behind this broadcast. Pentaneous Sale and Motor Yacht Insurance, as well as Pipeline Drillers, Optical Solutions Australia, Boat Tech Australia, and also Growing Teams, which is headed by Sandy Eastman. All of those companies have helped us immensely over the year, whether it's been with product or just being there to rescue us when we've had issues. And I think um, that's what Hiko was all about to a lot of people. He gave people hope, and especially a lot of women in sport, and he was just a really, really beautiful person. So we will miss him all greatly this year. And with that, before I shed a little tear, I think we're going to go to an interview with Andrew Says, who has also won the Tattersalls Cup. He won the Tattersalls Cup in 2009 on his Beneteau 40.7, too true, and he's back again this year to take it on from South Australia as part of the exceptionally strong South Australian contingent we have in this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl on the dock at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, right next to the beautiful Too True, the winner of the Tattersalls Cup in 2009. Andrew, you're back. I'm back. We've had a couple of years off. We've done a fast net in between, and now we're back to have a, another go at the, at the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Another crack. Seven years on. She was brand new then. How, how, how's she going? Has she been out? She, what's been happening? <laughs> You've well, been off the radar. Yeah, we have. But, well, we did, we did 210, 211, 212, and yeah. then we had a break, and we built a new crew. We've got four guys doing their first Hobart, and uh, one from the UK, an import, and four old guys, <laughs> four, four older guys doing, doing it again. So, yeah. yeah, we've just rebuilt the team, had some time off family and other commitments sort of took over and now we're back. Yeah, because it can all become a bit of a bubble and get a bit addictive and you just keep going and going. You look, know? look, it's a full program out of Adelaide. We've got to sail most of the year and do boat mm. prep most of the year. So if you're going to be competitive, you've got to have that sort of commitment. And, yeah. and it's a big journey to get the boat here from Adelaide. It's a thousand miles. Uh, yeah, it's a big effort. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Now, Pete, you're here. You're an import, a, yep. new, a new body to the crew, but I'm guessing you've known Andrew a little while. Are you excited? Very excited. It's, a, it's been one of the bucket lists to do. Um, Andrew and I sailed the 2013 Fastnet, had a great time on that. Um, well, it was a very light wind race, so we didn't even you know, splash on top of the decks. So I'm expecting the Sydney Hobart to be something like that. Is that right? I think it might be a little bit different. Yes, I've, got a ha I've gotten into a habit of calling the Fastnet the slow net. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was that year. Yeah, it was. Um, but it can be, a, can be a tough one as well. It can. It can uh, but I, I can guarantee you that the Rolex Sydney Hobart is, is not going to be the slow net. <laughs> no, I've been looking at the forecasts and it uh, looks pretty windy for a bit of it. Um, so really looking forward to it. We've got a great crew. We sail with Andrew and his crew in the UK and in Adelaide as well. Um, fantastic crew, really looking forward to it. Um, Christmas is going to be very different for us with um, not much alcohol, which is very different from normal. And not much snow, Pete. Not much cold weather no. or snow. Listening to the Christmas carols when they're talking about snow on the ground just seems a little bit unreal, actually, when you're over here. But it's well, great to be here. Well, I can tell you that come uh, Boxing Day night, you might be just as cold as if there was snow about. <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> I've got a feeling now. It, You've had a little bit of time off, but no doubt you're still going to be just as competitive within yourselves as, as ever. Yeah, look, there's, I think there's four other first 40 
uh, in, our, in our division, Division 3, so that's going to be really competitive. Wicked was in the event in 2009 and came second to us that year. Oof. So poor old Wicked, every time we've met in regattas, we've usually beaten them and they've come one spot behind us and here we are again lining up to do a race that they didn't think we were going to be in. So that's, they'll be very competitive and Bravo with Robbie Robinson will be competitive. So look, we're just interested in seeing how we go in that division of about 20 boats and hopefully beat the other first 40s. Yeah, indeed. I, I, I know it's, it's interesting because you say um, Bravo, that was the old concubine, another boat out of South Australia. You seem to love your first 40s. Well, I mean, this design by Bruce Farr is a really good boat. It's a, it's a good sized boat. It's a manageable boat on sort of budget that's a, a reasonable budget for, for most of us. Um, you know, we're not in the, in the elite category of racing maxi yachts. And, I don't and, think you have to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a good program. It's a manageable program. You can get the boat around the country. Uh, so that's, that's why they're a popular boat. And they're a very competitive boat. You know, the IRC rating on this boat is still very competitive. Yeah, awesome. Well, it's great to see. And it's nice to see you back and it's nice to see you in the country <laughs> thank you we're really looking forward to it there's a few other brits here we've got another first 40 over here called breakthrough with some brits oh, on board awesome. nikki kerwin's here um, on there so we're gonna have a real battle i think all the way around so not only is it wicked versus too true it's pom versus pom Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you want to be the first POM home, but good luck in your division, because if you get halfway there, you know, win your division, then maybe you'll be in with a shot. You, that's always the way in this race, you know, that you've, the weather pattern's looking like a big boat race, but it hasn't settled down yet, you know, and everyone goes like they try and predict the weather days in advance. I wait till about two or three days before you start to get a firmer idea of what the true pattern's going to look like. Then you can work out whose race it's going to be, but then people have to sail well, they have to not break things. There's always that opportunity in this race. Absolutely, and, and I know that you've done it quite a few times, so you've got that experience in, in your hat as well, because that is more important than weather most yeah, of the time. It, it is. You've just got to know when to reef the boat in a bit, when to take the accelerator off a bit, and you know, don't break the boat up, get there and see how we go. Excellent. Well, good luck to you guys. Thanks, Nikki. Have a good one. Thank Cheers, Nikki. Thank you. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia for your Rolex Sydney to Hobart 2016 pre-game show brought to you by Zyke and many other sponsors that we just mentioned before the last break. Next to me, I have my dad, Rob Douglas, reluctantly on screen as he wants to talk through the interviews that we've already done. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity for you to hear the interviews that we've already done too. So we're going to go through them. So we've already spoken to Adrian Carlin. Yes, we heard from her. her 25 Hobarts this year, a record for females. Absolutely incredible. Phil Eady, we've heard from him. He's the late call-up navigator for Sonic, the first Korean entry in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Absolutely incredible. Luda Ingerval and Sir Robert Hinsey, we had a great boat tour there. Got to see CQ CQS in all its glory. But have they had enough time? No. Uh, I think Luda has, has said that at their best, they'll be at 90% and they'll be really happy with a fourth. So if you're betting on CQS for line honours, um, maybe hold your horses. But then also there's been chat online about maybe he's trying to drive the betting up because he does work with a finance company as his major <laughs> sponsor. So just be aware of that. Mark Richards from Wild Oats. We did hear from him as well. Wild Oats has to be the favourite for line honours leading into this race. They are a very, very strong knit team. And I just, you know, I think we just have to go with that. Anthony Bell, we haven't heard from him yet. We will hear from Anthony Bell very, very shortly. Perpetual Loyal, all the mods they've done, as well as Brad Kellett. He's up to his 25th Hobart and he will be the youngest person ever to do 25 Hobarts in a row. That cannot be beaten because he started when he was 16 and now you can only start when you're 18. So we'll hear from him. And uh, Ali from Flying Fish, what a glamour she is. If you didn't see that interview and um, you are a gent watching this lovely broadcast. I think that you should watch back later because you'll really love Ali. I made sure that I, I, I spoke to her just for you boys. Charles Cudrelia. Yes, we heard from him. He is sailing on U-Box. It's a Cookson 50. It was Pretty Fire 3 and they've now purchased that boat. So it is basically the Dong Fong race team and it's great to see them here and ready to go and building up into the next Volvo Ocean race. A little point about those guys because I didn't get to talk about it afterwards because we did, not, did end up with a live guest straight after that interview. Charles Cudrelia <laughs> and the Chinese team. Basically, they are taking more food to Hobart than any other boat. I have to let you know this. More food than any other boat because they're half French and they're half Chinese. And the French will only eat French food 
and the Chinese will only eat Chinese food. And the crew boss was telling me about it yesterday and it's like, it's a nightmare, more so than usual for Alex and Hobart. So there's a, a nice little tidbit there. Derek and Marty Shepperton we heard, on, heard from very early in the show. Fortunately, there were a few breaks in that interview, but I am hoping, guys, I know this feed's been a little bit difficult to deal with, that I will take the live stream, which we are recording, and I'll clip it together with all of our HD pre-records that we did. Did 25 of them. We were all ready to go this morning and it was going to be perfect and it will be perfect. Don't you worry. I will make it so. Anyway, we heard from Derek and Marty Shepperton from Black Sheep. Had a little lays on their couch in the Beneteau 45. Beautiful boat there. Andrew Says and Patrick Robson. We just heard from them. Too true. Winner of the Tattersalls Cup in 2009. Would have to be looking like a potential favourite given the forecast now is pushing towards those early 50-footers back to the 40-footers. I'd keep an eye on those guys if I was you, but I don't bet, so don't listen to me. Robbo from Bravo. Bravo. Best name ever, Robbo Robison. Could you get a better name? But he's back to do another Hobart. Bought the purpose-built 40.7, which is the old concubine yachting. We've also heard from Chev Bruland, who used to own that boat, now is the Mills 45. But Robbo, great guy there. Brad Kellett we'll hear from. James Delegate we heard from, but that interview was a shocker with the Wi-Fi. That was right around the briefing when there was Wi-Fi being sucked up by news producers and our data. We've got a rotating system and it still wasn't working. And the, the data system wasn't working either because everyone was here for the briefing. So... Giacomo, James Delegate, he is the son of the owner of the Volvo 70 Giacomo, said to his dad at some point in time, I really, you know, think that maybe I want to go sailing and his dad bought Group Armour. Here you go. Have a Volvo 70. <laughs> awesome. Best present ever. But now he's 18 and he actually gets to go south when he's done deliveries for years and years and years. So that was a great interview too. Matt Allen, we're yet to hear from. Ichiban, potentially the favourite going into this race. Great interview with him as always. And that one will be coming up soon. Paul Clitheroe from Balance. Gosh, he loves a chat. That was a 10-minute interview, but he does have some valid points. We brought up safety first. Tether, tether, tether especially when we thought that the forecast was going to be a lot nastier than it is now looking. And uh, we also heard about the Rolex to Tasman Light and Prey. That's a very serious concept that I want to bring into um, Varuna we've got coming up as well. I managed to chat to those guys in the bar last night. We will hear from them. Silas Nolan we've heard from. He's jumped from Concubine after a broken mask to Chinese Whisper. was great to see Chinese Whisper under sunset last night. Chinese Whisper and Varuna have to be the two hottest boats in the fleet, I reckon. Literally the hottest and also the hottest when it's hot with a black deck. Seriously, who comes up with black decks? Stacey Jackson we heard from early on. What an awesome chick. Ninth Hobart, RP66, crew boss, manager, and that boat really only listens yeah. to her. Yeah, and nice. Maserati we don't actually have on our list because they didn't turn up. But live, 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 live. Now he's up to date and you've had a little bit of a recap on where we're at. We're going to chat to two of the guys from Patrice. We are going to chat to Tony Kirby. From Patrice, he's the skipper of Patrice, and also Jason Round, who's I believe the main sheet hand at the moment. So we're going to grab them live. Here they come! Doo -doo -doo. One minute! Oh, Tommy Brewer, you're up, mate. <laughs> Patrice aren't ready, so in comes Tommy Brewer. He's from Balance, one of my mates, and he comes on my show every year. And um, and I'm sure the beard gets longer every year. Oh, I don't know. I shaved it yesterday. I think it's better. Shaved it yesterday. Well, trimmed it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a theory. Uh, do you? I've okay. got a theory. Okay. Everyone on balance yeah. could talk underwater. Yeah, no, that's probably fair. It's probably fair when we're doing our, you know, heads or changes and manoeuvres as well. I think there's a lot more talk about uh, everyone staying quiet on the boat than being noisy on the boat, I think. Yeah, no, it's definitely true. But, I mean, Paul's a media guy, so whenever he comes on, he's just going to talk, 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 isn't he? I'm just waiting for you to take a breath, mate. <gasps> <laughs> no, but Tommy joined me last year and it was great to chat to him. His skipper was otherwise engaged. But we had a chat about how to win Hobart, you basically have to be the winning TP52 sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> last year was certainly uh, true, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, it, it's interesting. They're, they're, they're good kind of size range for the race. Looks like maybe at the moment, based off the forecast, maybe one of the slightly smaller boats will yeah. be... Be favoured, but you I just said a 40.7, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, I, yeah, okay, that's probably a little slower than what I was thinking. But you know, who knows? You know, it's all it'll all come down to tomorrow morning, I think. Yeah. Going through that trough off the south coast is going to be the significant deciding factor for us. Absolutely, I'm just excited because I know the seas are going to be calm, so we're not going to have a rehash of 2014 Sailor Hurl. 
Yeah, and, and even if they aren't calm, we'll be going with them rather than into them. So that'll be a lot more comfortable for us, I think. Yay, so that's going to be fantastic. I'm also excited that the Southerly's not pushing through and there's not going to be a record broken. Sorry, guys. <laughs> because that would have had to meant that I changed my flight. Oh, really? You're going down <laughs> quick, huh? Yeah, okay, fair enough, fair enough. No, no but, uh, but also... Knows, you might be proven wrong, yeah. It could all happen. <laughs> it, you know, the forecast of tomorrow morning will be nothing like what it is today. If and then I'll be in stripes. <laughs> yeah, like, I've never done a Hobart where the forecast that we've had as we're getting on the boats on Boxing Day is stuck true. You know, normally the navigator pops up, pops up first thing tomorrow morning and goes, well, it's all changed. <laughs> this is what we're doing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, absolutely awesome. And, and what's your nickname, Tom Brewer? I have many <laughs> nicknames, none of which I'm going to repeat too frequently. I don't know. Hobart, okay, mate. Okay, we'll do it on the other side. <laughs> we'll do it on the other side, but good luck to you Thank and the you. balance team. Yep. Winners of the Tattersalls Cup last year. You never lose that one, hey? Yeah, no, that's one for the memory banks for sure. You know, I've got the, the model of the boat on the wall and it's, uh, it's a pretty special one. I'm enjoying my last few hours as defending champion before we push <laughs> off and I'm a has-been. <laughs> and, and I'm speaking about extra flights. A good story from last year is that the balance team was so convinced they weren't going to win and that uh, Juro, who we just heard from Shane Kearns, was going to actually take the Tesla's Cup that they all flew home. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of us did. And then they had, most of the crew then turned around and got back on yeah. a plane the next day to come down for the prize giving. <laughs> Fortunately, I, I was planning to hang around from the beginning, so I kind of just chuckled at them as they were all <laughs> frantically organising flights to come back. But, yeah, no, it was a big wait because it was two boats in a row each night that we were waiting for that had a shot at getting us. Far so we were, I was more tired after the waiting than I was after the race, I think. It was, Far uh, out. It was full on. And, and speaking about the race, I better let you get to it because yeah. I've got other people to talk to before yeah. they head off on the race too. Team Patrice. Team Patrice. And yeah. I think Chapo's waiting over there too Fantastic. for Team Boulevard. So. All right. I'll see you soon. Oh, see you man. down on the other side. I'll see you on the yeah. other side, mate. Good luck, Brewer. We're going to stay live and we'll bring in our next team. Thank you so much for staying with us, guys. My name's Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. We're just going to move this camera. Thank you so much, Rob Douglas, because we've got a few more people coming in and it's going to be a great chat. And, uh, and a big thanks to our legendary friends, Zyke, who are the naming rights broadcasters f with us, with this exceptional broadcast, which isn't just today, guys. It lasts for the entire length of this amazing event. Shifting in a little bit. And uh, we will be live out on the water as well with our commentary. Only audio. We are not allowed to broadcast live via visual. But we will be doing a live commentary of the start, which you can find all over our Facebook. I will keep you posted on that. Don't you worry. And we're going to have a fantastic interview show coming up as well down in Hobart, as well as plenty of live finishes. Thanks to our champion sponsors, Harkin and B&G, our name and sponsors, of course, like, and our supporters, Optical Solutions Australia, Growing Teams, Pantaneous Sail and Motor Yacht Insurance, as well as Pipeline Drillers and Boat Tech Australia. Oh, you're loving the sit down. <laughs> oh, and Tony Kirby's taking a phone call. <laughs> this is live TV, gentlemen. Come on, move around, move around. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Jace Road. How are you going? I'm going great, thanks. Yeah, yeah good. Beautiful day. Yeah, glamour day. I, I think the last time I interviewed you was in Cows. Could have been, yeah. I've sort of re-looked at that and I had a beer <laughs> in my hand. It wasn't so good. <laughs> I think it's great. I think every yachty should have a beer in their hand when they're getting interviewed. Well, yeah. Okay. And that means I'm talking to you at the finish, not the start, when you're a little bit less stressed. I I'm still waiting for that, co that coffee, I was promised, but yeah. I'm sure it'll come. Yeah, I think, I think Rob Douglas is slacking. We do have, shh, we have a coffee machine going down here, but... Shh, I think it's a bit contraband because we have a guy selling coffee just over the way. But anyway, Patrice, you guys all prepped. You ready to go? We are. We're all set to go. Just waiting to make probably one final decision on the final sales. Uh, I'll have to have a secret meeting with the great Darren Jones and work through that. The great Darren Jones. Who yeah. is this creature? Oh, a little guy on my left here. Look, there he is. The twirler. Uh, can we see twirler? Oh, you're going to have to come in, twirler, apparently. <laughs> oh, oh, coffee everywhere. Oh, the owner's got coffee. That's good to see. Excellent, excellent. But the great D Darren Jones, like really it's 10 o'clock, the start's at 1, and you're still making major sale choice decisions. Well, yeah, just our downwind sales, I think. Mm. Yeah, we're, you know, up in the air a little bit, but we'll, we'll see how it pans out. Excellent. Tony, you, you've got a, a pretty good team of rock stars, mate. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, they've been on board for quite a while too, so it's not like a, we've just created the team. We've been building up for a long time for this race. Yeah, but I'm, I'm sure that the forecast maybe Twirler is, is looking a little bit better for you guys than you might have thought maybe four or five days ago. 
Uh, maybe it's actually um, it is good for us. The first part of the race, if we can get a, if we can see in excess of 25 knots, it's going to be really good for this boat. Yeah. So that's time for us to probably make hay while the sun shines. It's a bit of a shame that the transition could not evolve as bad as what I thought, because that would probably slow down the boats in front of us a little bit. Yeah. Our biggest problem is if it stays too much out of the east post transition, like uh, tomorrow morning onwards, and we're reaching a lot, you know, we just become a 46 footer again. So the 52s and the 60s, etc., will get away a little bit. But, you know, we'll keep pushing, and uh, it's quite unstable still from the middle of Tassie down to the bottom. So, you know, we'll keep pushing, and if things go away, it's all good. If it doesn't, then we'll hang tough, and hopefully we'll fall into place come the, come the finish, because, of course, we can control most things until the iron pot, but once from the iron pot to the finish, you're just going, ugh, it's all about timing, isn't it? I've, we've spoken about this a little bit today, so um, obviously you're doing the best that you can to control your sail choices and all that sort of thing, and then the weather's a little bit out of your hands, and the talk of the transition period, uh, that transition period is always a big one in Hobart, I think, and then um, and, and we've been talking about it today, and I want to see if you guys can grab onto this concept. It's not the Rolex Sydney to Hobart, it's the Rolex Sydney to Tasman Light and cross your fingers. What do you reckon, Tony Kirby? Oh, that's definitely right. Yep, the, the last uh, 50 miles can be the hardest 50 miles. That's for sure. I've yeah. won and lost that race, the race a few times in, uh, there. Or actually, I haven't won the race, but uh, that's the hardest part. And if we get the scenario right, which is our models are saying, we're going to be finishing in the afternoon sea breeze. So that'd be perfect for us. That would be perfect. How many Hobarts have you done, Jace? Racking up for my fourth. Fourth. Yeah. Awesome. Twirl a mate. I just said to that before, I, I can't remember. I'm going, I've got to think back to the IOR days. So, but it's got to be closing on 20. 20. It's got closing on 20. Yeah. Closing on 20. And Kirby? Well, this is, will be my 32nd. Oh, uh, is that all? Yeah, Michael Bellingham's doing his 25th on the race. Wow. Uh, Barney Walker, unfortunately, has uh, had to stay at home and no. it's his first Boxing Day in 30 years. So he's really fretting at the home watching us on telly tonight. You guys, I reckon Patrice maybe has... It is one of the biggest Hobarts per capita, shall we say? What do you reckon? Yeah, maybe except for me. <laughs> the uh, the inshore team is part of us here. You're letting the team down, Jay. I'm still learning. I'm having a, having a go, yeah. 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 yeah we do have some young guys who are doing their first and second okay. uh, and third Don't races. Don't feel too bad there, Jace. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. It's all good. You're not affecting the rating too much. Well, as always, gentlemen, it's, it's, <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. And I, I personally think that you guys are going to have a really good run south. Um, I'm, I think that Fingers mid crossed. 40 footer range is going to look quite nice. Time will tell, Nick. It Time will. will tell. We'll have fun anyway. <laughs> Isn't that the aim of the game, Twerla? It no, oh, it's going to be fun, the Savo, and then we'll just see how it goes from there. But it'll be, it'll be good. It will be a fun race, no matter what happens. Everyone will enjoy this race in some way, shape, or form. The results will fall the way they fall, but I'm sure that it's going to be a fun race for everyone. Yeah, and I think that's the aim of the game. Really, I mean, now we've got 89 boats heading south, but it's um. It's a race for, you know, such a variety of, shall we say, talents. Because you guys, I know, have a, a bunch of rock stars on board, but there's such a spread of, of characters throughout the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Yes, and including on my crew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's why I've got three of you here to chat with me at the same time, which is absolutely awesome. Thanks for taking a busy time out of your day when I know you've still got sail choices to make now. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I'm going to let you go, and I wish you all the best. Good luck, guys. Thanks, and, um, and good luck when you head south. Thank so, no worries. <laughs> what was that? We want a repeat of that. Yeah, you'll be, you'll be the first to interview us when we win. Yeah, that's yeah. what we like. Sailor Girl exclusives, yeah. awesome. All right, Thank boys, you. good luck. Thank if I don't, if I don't see you out there, have a good one. Awesome. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to go to one of the other boats that I think might do very, very well this year. Two True won the Tattersalls Cup in 2009 at Beneteau, 40.7. We uh, we might see them doing it quite well as well. It, it, as the guys from Patrice said, it depends on that transition period as, as and, and nobody can pick that really and we will know that tomorrow morning. So I'll either be rebooking my flight or I'll be sleeping in a little bit more tomorrow and waiting for those smaller boats to bring it home come my trip down to Hobart. So let's go to this interview with Two True. Andrew says he's got half of his original team, half new guys and one POM import. <laughs> Sailor Girl on board, Perpetual Oil, the Maxi with Brad Kellett. Just chilling, because I think you guys are all set 
ready to go. Yeah, we're ready to go. I've got the young fella downstairs doing a little bit of cleaning and we've just done our van maintenance for the van's trip down to Hobart. Perfect. And yeah, we're just about to lock her up until Boxing Day. Absolutely incredible. Now, Brad, something else that's pretty awesome. You're coming up to your 25th Hobart. Ooh, yeah, it's a big milestone this year. Um, it was something that when I was 16 I never really thought I'd do consecutively yeah. but now that I'm here it's pretty cool and uh, yeah, going to try and... This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl on the dock at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia right next to the beautiful Two True, the winner of the Tattersalls Cup in 2009. Andrew, you're back. I'm back. We've had a couple of years off. We've done a fast net in between and... Now we're back to have a, another go at the, at the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Another crack. Four guys, four, four older guys doing, doing it again. So, yeah. yeah, we've just rebuilt the team, had some time off, family and other commitments sort of took over and now we're back. Yeah, because it can all become a bit of a bubble and get a bit addictive and you just keep going and going. You look, know? look, it's a full program out of Adelaide. We've got to sail most of the year and do boat mm. prep most of the year. So if you're going to be competitive, you've got to have that sort of commitment. And, yeah. and it's a big journey to get the boat here from Adelaide. It's a thousand miles. Uh, yeah, it's a big effort. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Now, Pete, you're here. You're an import, a yep. new a new body to the crew. But I'm guessing you've known Andrew a little while. Are you excited? Very excited. It's, a, <laughs> it's been one of the bucket lists to do. Um, Andrew and I sailed the 2013 Fastnet. Oh, had a great time on that. Um, well, it was a very light wind race, so we didn't even you know a splash on top of the decks. So I'm expecting the Sydney Hobart to be something like that. Is that right? I think it might be a little bit different. Yes, I've, got a ha I've gotten into a habit of calling the fast net the slow net. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was that year, yeah, it was. Um, but it can be, a, can be a tough one as well. It can, it can uh, but I, I can guarantee you that the Rolex Sydney Hobart is, is not going to be the slow net. <laughs> no, I've been looking at the forecasts and it uh, looks pretty windy for a bit of it. it, it um, so really looking forward to it. We've got a great crew, sail with Andrew and his crew in the UK and in Adelaide as well. Um, fantastic crew, really looking forward to it. Um, Christmas is going to be very different for us with um, not much alcohol, which is very different from normal. And not much snow, Pete. Not much cold weather no. or snow. Listening to the Christmas carols when they're talking about snow on the ground just seems a little bit unreal actually when you're over here. But it's well, great to be here. Well, I can tell you that come uh, Boxing Day night, you might be just as cold as if there was snow about. <laughs> I think you might be right. I've got a feeling now. It, You've had a little bit of time off, but no doubt you're still going to be just as competitive within yourselves as, as ever. Yeah, look, there's, I think there's four other first 40 uh, in, our, in our division, Division 3, so that's going to be really competitive. Wicked was in the event in 2009 and came second to us that year. Oof. So poor old Wicked, every time we've met in regattas, we've usually beaten them and they've come one spot behind us, and here we are again lining up to do a race that they didn't think we were going to be in. So. That's, they'll be very competitive and Bravo with Robbie Robinson will be competitive so look we're just interested in seeing how we go in that division of about 20 boats and hopefully beat the other first 40s. Yeah indeed I, I know it's, it's interesting because you say um, Bravo that was the old concubine another boat out of South Australia you seem to love your first 40s. Well I mean that this design by Bruce Farr is a really good boat. It's a, it's a good sized boat, it's a manageable boat on sort of budget that's a, a reasonable budget for, for most of us. Um, you know, we're not in the, in the elite category of racing maxi yachts. And, I don't and, think you have to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and you know, it's a, it's a good program, it's a manageable program, you can get the boat around the country, uh, so that's, that's why they're a popular boat. And they're a very competitive boat, you know, the IRC rating on this boat is still very competitive. Yeah, awesome. Well, it's great to see and it's nice to see you back and it's nice to see you in the country. <laughs> Thank you. We're really looking forward to it. There's a few other Brits here. We've got another first 40 over here called Breakthrough with some Brits oh, on board. Awesome. Nikki Kerwin's here um, on there, so we're going to have a real battle, I think, all the way around. So not only is it Wicked versus Too True, it's Pom versus Pom. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you want to be the first Pom home, but good luck in your division, because if you get halfway there, you know, win your division, then maybe you'll be in with a shot. You, that's always the way in this race, you know, that you've, the weather pattern's looking like a big boat race, but it hasn't settled down yet, you know, and everyone goes like they try and predict the weather days in advance. I wait till about two or three days before you start to get a firmer idea of what the true pattern's going to look like. Then you can work out whose race it's going to be. But then people have to sail well, they have to not break things. There's always that opportunity in this race. Absolutely. And, and I know that you've done it quite a few times, so you've got that experience in, in your hat as well, because that is more important than weather most yeah, of the time. It, it is. You've just got to know when to reef the boat in a bit, when to take the accelerator off a bit and, you know, don't break the boat up, get there and see how we go. Excellent. Well, good luck to you guys. Thanks, Nikki. Have a good one. Thank Cheers, Nikki. Thank you. 
And we're live at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl and your Rolex Sydney Hobart 2016 pre-game show. We have a ring in next to me and also one sailor who's heading south. Commodore, how are you? Very well, Nick. It's a great day today. Fantastic conditions going to Hobart for all the, uh, the, uh, the competitors. Just looks really good. And your son is heading south. Yeah, David's going down on... Oh, David. Uh, yeah, David. <laughs> yep, Chapo, he's going down on Hollywood Boulevard uh, and looking forward to a quick and fast trip. Excellent. Dave, Chapo, mate, how are you going? Yeah, good. Merry Christmas, Nick, and all that crap. Merry... <laughs> no, that's fine. It's, it's allowed on this TV channel. <laughs> uh, yeah, all this crap. You've been on my, I think, my Hobart broadcast for the past five years. This is my fifth year. Celebrating my fifth. Perfect. Lucky yeah. man, aren't I? Very, very lucky. And now I've got your dad to just to celebrate too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fantastic. You guys are doing a, a great job, Nick. And uh, mm -hmm. it's good to have so much coverage of all the, all the sailing that's going on all around the world and in Sydney, of course, today. Just a huge event. Thank you so much, Chapo. How many Hobarts have you, you done? Big Chapo, little uh, Chapo. I think I've competed in either 11 or 12, but I only got there about six times. So uh, my shortest trip was when we pulled the deck off too impetuous off Bondi, and we were back, I think we are the first boat back, and another year we got as far as Ulladulla. Oh, I know Ulladulla. <laughs> and one of the crew members said, uh, Bluey, there's a lot of water in the boat. And I said, yes, it is. It's a pretty wet boat. And they said, yeah, but it's up to our knees. So men with uh, buckets, they can bail out a boat very quickly. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Men with buckets of... Uh, wa yeah, <laughs> oh, wait, water. that's Customs House. <laughs> yeah, yes. I got that one confused. Chapo, how's your rating going? Have you got a better ratio of finishing to your father? I'm definitely my father's son. <laughs> um, we don't need to talk too much about that. But oh, why not, Chapo? But, Little Chapo. Uh, my dad's dad, Grandpa, he did three and finished three, so oh. I think he's 100% and we'll, we'll never beat that. So. No, you will never beat that. No, You'll no. die trying. Yeah, no, that's right, but uh, I'm, I'm actually going to Hobart tomorrow on our uh, timber boat to take it to the wooden oh, boat show, Nick, yeah. so uh, we're going to have a pretty good trip too. You're going to have a great Sydney to Hobart. Yep, and I don't think we'll be sitting on the rail. I think we've got some gourmet meals ready to go. Um, <laughs> overnight to uh, Eden, spend a night in Eden, then an overnight to Flinders and spend the rest of the time just motoring slowly down the uh, east coast to Tasmania. Now that sounds like my kind of Sydney to Hobart. That's much better way to do it. Meanwhile, little chapeau, <laughs> David, you're going on Hollywood, Hollywood Boulevard. Tell me a little bit about her. Uh, she's a far 55, the old living doll, and she's just been put together kind of last minute. We're still not quite there, but the race is today and we're, we're going to start the race and see how we go. Awesome. And a few good sailors on board. Good. Yeah, lots of talent on board. We've got two uh, two Olympians, one of whom is a silver medalist, and Speezy's on board. It's my second time with him. And uh, Steve McConaughey, who I come up against a lot in the One Design circuit. So I'm on his watch, and it'll be interesting. He's had a great year too, as have you. Yeah, he's had a pretty good year, I think, yeah. Well, I'm sure we've got plenty of time to talk about it. <laughs> and maybe you'll finish it off very nicely. Well, thank you very much, Commodore. Thanks, Nick. It's been great to be here, and uh, we're going to go out on the start on one of the uh, official boats to oh, be able to watch the uh, race. So it's really good, really good to be here, and it's just a fantastic day in Sydney. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me, even though you were very reluctant. You added a lot of character, so I just want to say that. And also, uh, David Chapo Chapman, thank you for joining me as always. Thanks, Nick. See you in Hobart. Yay! I will, and that's where we'll um, practice with our other buckets. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I mightn't be in the same place as you guys, I can assure you. Awesome. You don't drink? I don't drink either. Great. Awesome. <laughs> you guys better roll along. And, um, and what next? What is next? That's a good question. I think what we're going to do next is talk about the competition that we've got running over this Rolex Sydney Hobart broadcast brought to you by Zyke. We have over $1,000 worth of kit to give away, guys. Absolutely incredible. John Bacon modelled it earlier, and I think at this point I'm just going to have to overlay that exact procedure that he did because he put on all of the garments that we actually have up. An Aeroshell jacket in your size and colour. A wet backpack, which is pretty awesome actually. Where is it? I'm going to show it because it's awesome. Wet backpack with a, a little iPad pouch as well as a pair of ZKGs which are conveniently inside this back backpack ready for me to go on the water. Very, very shortly to commentate the start for you live. Bye Mrs Chapo. I love that family. They are fantastic. 
ZKGs, your colour and style. You don't have to get the boat shoe type. You can also get the ZKG sailing shoe as well. We have stacks of hats for all those fans who are sharing our content because this is just the start of a very long event, guys, and we're going to be doing plenty of stuff over the course of it. And a big, big thanks at this point as well to our champion sponsors, Harkin and B&G, and our supporting sponsors, Optical Solutions Australia, Pipeline Drillers, Pantaneous Sail and Motor Yacht Insurance, as well as Boat Tech Australia, and our final supporting sponsor, who's slipping my mind right now. No, it's Growing Teams, Sandy Eastman. Well, you're probably watching. Thank you so much for all of the help. And we're going to go to Brad... To Matt Allen. Oh, Matt Allen. Speaking of Sandy Eastman, I had lunch with Sandy Eastman and Matt Allen the other day. It was very lovely. Over at the squadron, and we just spoke to the Commodore of the Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that synergy, as if it was meant to be. Let's hear from Matt Allen, who is the owner of Ichiban, the Kakik 60, and Ichiban, the TP-52. He's taking the TP-52, and he's probably going to be one of the boats that we see on that top three for the Tattersalls Cup. Let's go to Matt Allen. Absolutely awesome. going to be the best chat of our lives. We always have a good chat, don't we, Nick? We always have a great chat, Matt Allen. Here we go. Feeling tall. <laughs> You're making me feel short. Well, this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia with Matt Allen, who likes to keep us all on his toes just because he's lucky enough to have two boats. But the TP-52 is getting the Guernsey this year, mate. That's the one. Well, we gave the 60 a run last year. and uh, <laughs> Fair's fair. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a turn for the 52, so we're going to give her a run. Um, Look, it's good weather. We're always really going to take the TP-52 unless yeah. some of the modifications didn't work out yeah. or something. So um, the weather forecast looks pretty good for, I don't know, the 50, 60, 70 footers, I think. And uh, so um, we're all keen to do that. We're leading, you know, the Blue Water point score with the 52. So, you know, we've got a chance of winning that. We, you know, it's all, it's all down to the last race, as it always is. And, you know, we've got to beat Chinese Whisper or whatever. And, yeah. you know, if we do that, then we're all good. And if they beat us, then we're not so good so yeah we'll the blue run. yeah on average or a step behind yeah um because they haven't been doing as much racing you know we haven't had a lot of like heavy weather sailing but we've had a lot of competitive sailing and the sure. boats are the boats are very close out there so that's a good reflection of the crews the boats you know and the rating system yeah definitely now for those who don't know ichiban that you have the tp used to be shogun it's renowned for being very very quick but very wet and i believe the modifications that you've made have been to help with that you want to talk me through some of the mods yeah so we've just we've just done some common sense things we've strengthened the bow up the engineer said you don't need to do it but we go yeah we, we're just going to want to take another step further um we've uh waterproofed the forehead hatch properly you know which sounds easy but it's quite a big exercise um also the center hatch and we've really taken a boat that was designed originally to sail in the med by a bunch of italians you know and plenty of water around <laughs> to something that is um you know like it's a really fun boat to sail but it's very wet and a lot of that water was getting below the deck. So we've just done some really common sense things that you need to do to go sailing on the east coast of Australia. Yep. So now you have a very quick boat, which isn't going to sink. <laughs> <laughs> well, like common sense. Well, I reckon all boats can sink, but uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not this one. Yeah. Uh, hopefully not this week. So, you know, we're, um, no, I think the boat's in, you know, ready to go. Um, and uh, we're really happy with everything, the way it's come together. We've tested everything. I'm sure, you know, a couple of things, you know, there'll still be water down below, but but um, hopefully not nearly as much, and uh, we'll uh, we'll just keep the wet gear on the whole way. Yeah, perfect. To Hobart. <laughs> Ready to go. Now, those who have started with you and, and those who know you know how much you love your team. Yeah. Um, you know, we know it's your family. You, you very much attached that. The, the team this year, similar to last year, what's happening? Yeah, look, we're always making a few changes as people. You know, we've had we've had one or two injuries, unfortunately. Oh, no, we've had uh, one of the guys had a bit of a back injury that still hasn't come, come good, and uh, and uh, Benny Rice uh, cut the top off his finger the other day, not you know sailing on on, on another boat. Um, so we've had a few injuries and we've changed a few things around, but look, we've got a really good team. Uh, we've got Will Oxley back. You know, he's not doing. There's no Volvo Ocean race going on. Yeah, you know, this month, so uh, he's 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 back in the navigator's chair, which is great. And uh, although he doesn't like the TP, because there's only a bean bag for him to sit in, I sit on. I remember that from last year. Yeah, well, it, it, we've upgraded the situation. You know, it's amazing what you can do with money. And. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, no, he's re reasonably happy. I mean, it's fair to say that, you know, the 52 is, uh, it, it doesn't feel like you're on a five-star luxury liner. It's, uh, it's pretty hard. It's pretty brutal on the body. And, uh, and uh, we're going to be pretty, 
sore and and uh, you know we'll uh, we'll need a good sort of you know bit of physiotherapy by the time we get to Hobart. Yeah. But it's amazing what you know a couple of um, a couple of cold pies and a few warm beers can. Uh, and can... The real race begins yeah. in Customs House, but no, that a lot of people don't see that bit in the middle where it's really rough and and really hard on your bodies, just as they don't see how much effort you guys put in in the lead up yeah. as well. I mean that's just as hard. Yeah, no, it's it, it is pretty hard and. Uh, yeah, especially down if you're down the back of the boat, um, which in hard running conditions you've got to be, and and you're basically getting whiplash back there. Um, you know, the boat's really it, it feels like you're trying to ride a, you know, a horse, and you know, and 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 the thing's trying to throw you off. And it's, it's uh, it, you know, you can do it for five or ten minutes. It's not too bad, but uh, hour after hour, it really um, is pretty hard work. And you're using a lot of muscles that are just hanging on. That yeah. um, you know, you work it out later on that you you were using those muscles and. <laughs> Yeah, especially the older the muscles get, the more they tell you what they were doing. You I know. need you to focus. It's Christmas time, and that means that you get more rum at the other end. That's right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, at least we're going to be there pretty quickly, so yeah. we won't be won't be hanging out there for very, too long. Very, very true. And uh, and I know that the TPs and that whole middle bracket, you guys are really going to push each other. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you always got to be careful. You don't push too hard, or any, or you, you know, you don't back off too much as well. It's a fine line, and uh, you know, we always. Um, spend every year you know really focusing on how hard we can go um, for all the weather conditions and uh, you know the, the, a lot of experience and knowing your boat is, is really important when it gets to all that. All right so we we know you is relating to the fact that I know you're, you're pretty good at picking things and you're very good at playing the um, the odds. If you were going to put a bet would you bet on yourself? Um, I wouldn't because I don't bet and I'm superstitious. <laughs> but um, no, if, if somebody feels like having a bet, I, I, I would pick. You know, you know. I'm not a better either, you know, so I've got I, no idea. But I, who do you? I think? haven't looked at the odds and whatever, and um, and because we compete, we don't we don't bet. But um, you know, Varuna and um, you know Giacomo, um, Blackjack, um, Chinese Whisper, and ourselves. I think sort of. Yeah, it'll, it'll either be us or a little bit bigger, I think. Um, that'll be, I think, where the winner will come from. Um, um, the boats further in front might have slightly softer pressure uh, and the boats behind us might come into the do and a bit too late. Um, so I think that, you know, it's a pretty narrow field unless there's a big change in the weather and I can't see that changing, you know, in a macro sense very much. You know, the, the timing of a couple of changes might move around a little bit, but I don't think that's going to make a huge influence on the race. So, so I think it's a pretty narrow field, so uh, I hope that helps. And if it doesn't work out, don't blame me. <laughs> I'm not a better either. I definitely don't bet. But it's more that I think that you and I as non-betters, but also as um, keen observers of our sport, we sort of know where that range is going to be. Yeah, look, it's clear enough now. I think it was, we'd probably thought it was going to end up that way three days ago. Yeah. It's even clearer now. Um, it's not going to change that much, I don't think. Um, and you know, we, we we've got, you know, our weather has got us coming into the doing in the you know very early afternoon, which is a perfect arrival time. So steam up that doing. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> it never seems to work quite that way. I mean, the Derwent River, there's no, no there's no place like it to sail. It's it's bizarre, but anyway. Well, it's great to see that you've done so much work in the lead up. Fingers crossed that you managed to keep the boat together as well as yourselves, and and you have a great run up the Derwent, Matt. And um, hopefully, I'll see you at the other end with a few rumbos. Can't wait, Nick. See you there. That'll be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nick Douglas from Adventures of a Sailor Girl, live from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia for our Rolex Sydney Hobart. Oh, I've got my hand stuck in here. That'll teach me the Rolex Sydney Hobart broadcast for 2016, brought to you by Zark. Fantastic to be here. We've had our trials and tribulations across the day, but I think we're going to come good in the end. Don't you worry about that, guys. Feels like a yacht race, really. But anyway, we've, uh, we've had stacks going on, and it was fantastic to chat to Matt Allen. Great guy. President of Australian Sailing. He's been the chairman of Solus for a number of years and he passed that on this year to Brad Kellett, I believe. And speaking of Brad Kellett, we're now going to go to an interview with Dave Kellett, another of the Kellett family. Absolute legend. He has now done 25 Hobarts in a row and that will never be beaten. He was 16 when he started. 18 is now the age that you are you know, the, the minimum age to enter the Hobart. So he will be the youngest person to complete 25 consecutive Hobarts ever in history. There'll be nobody else. So I dropped into Perpetual Loyal to have a chat to him, but also to have a chat about all the modifications that they've done to Perpetual Loyal over the past year, following two years in a row having to retire, which was a real shame for the team. 
it's seriously stacked this year and we still have an interview to come with Anthony Bell as well. So here is Mr. Brad Kellett. <laughs> it's awesome. Others might think it's madness. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I don't know how intelligent I am for it, but anyway, that's life. And uh, there's some people that it's just in our blood and we do it every year, and there's other people that look at us like you're insane. Yeah. So it just takes some to no one, really. Exactly. Yeah, well, that's why, I sailors, that's why sailors love each other, because we've all got a little bit of that insanity yeah. level under the hood. Salt water in the veins. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Now, you're going on Loyal this year. It's yeah. a good way to mark 25th. It's a nice way to mark 25th. I was pretty stoked when yeah. Belly asked me to be a part of the crew. Yeah. And I've been looking after her for four months now. And so we've started in Wollongong with the boat in a million different pieces. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a nice accomplishment to be sitting here today ready to go. And, and all the out. crew are touring around New South Wales. And we're just waiting for Boxing Day. Sounds pretty easy, really. I mean, because a lot of people in the lead up to this Hobart, I mean, Loyal didn't make it last year or the year before, so, I mean, it, she did need an overhaul. She needed an overhaul. The guys at Mid Coast Boat Builders in Newcastle mm -hmm. did all of the re-engineering work, Excellent. and we were able to pretty much do all of the boat building in a two-month, three-month stint. And then once we got there, we started putting the boat together in Newcastle. So. Chris Maxted from the Comanche crew and myself did all of that work yep. with help from Sydney Rigging and Electric and just mm -hmm. between Chris and I and the contractors we plugged away and we were able to get the boat down here on the 1st of December Perfect. and since then we've just been doing three weeks of training and a couple of days off here or there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a nice lead up really. She's looked really good. I've seen her a few times out training and she looks fantastic. Thank you. We're really happy with the way the boat's yeah. going. We purposely left our big spinnaker on the dock for the Solus Big Boat Race just to tone things down a yeah. little <laughs> and I think that was a pretty good call so we, we just went out there with our A3, it was a brand new sail so yeah. we had to learn how to use it anyway and uh, yeah we were happy with our result that day, all the crew, it was the second time the crew had sailed together and everyone went really well. Rocket rocket ship uphill, yeah. I think. Yeah, we're trucking uphill, yeah. so look out. That's yeah. awesome. And and speaking of the crew, there's yourself, you're new this, this year, um, a few less celebrities, but only in terms of uh, popularity and mainstream, because there's quite a few rock stars from Comanche yeah. on board. There's uh, <laughs> about 10 Comanche guys, yeah. and then about 10 Australians, mm -hmm. including Tom Slingsby, and uh, he was dirt driving during the Solos yeah. Big Boat Race. And then Belly was standing there operating the keels and we have Herman winning, one of nice. the old 18 guys yeah, no, calling hey. shots. And so we have a good afterguard with uh, Tony Mutter as well from the yeah. just holding it all together as our sailing master. You need that. And, <laughs> yeah. And then working forward, Albie Pratt from North Sales. We love the Albie. Mal Parker, who's an, <laughs> another young Australian. So we've got a couple of young Australians on board as well. That's from nice. From the 2000 Cup. Yeah, we're pretty happy to be going yachting together. Yeah. Um, and then pretty much working through a whole bunch of Comanche guides to Flano on the foredeck. Yeah, Flano and Mitch White are noticed up there having, yeah, a, having a bit of banter during Solace. Mitch, yeah, Mitch was helping <laughs> us out. So but he'll be headed, on Bo Jess. Yeah, he's yeah. headed back to yeah. Bo Jess. But it was nice to have. Have Mitch on yeah. board and we had a couple of other ring-ins for the Solas big boat race and it was just really good to have a little bit of assistance getting the big girl around the harbour. That's awesome so your 25th Hobart I think is going to be a glamour and um, I think a lot of us just really want to see um, Loyal make it because we know how much effort goes into the program. Oh, absolutely there's yeah. four months of effort it's been yeah. a, a lot of work and we'll be very disappointed if we don't make it this year. Everyone we've, will be. We've be um, pretty much re-engineered the foredeck of the boat Perfect. and the forward slamming areas. They're a lot stronger than what they used to be. And considering the boat was just designed to break records and go downwind <laughs> everywhere, I think she's now a really good all-rounder. That's awesome. So we've um, been very fortunate with Belly's support. And uh, to be sitting here today is just a great thing, waiting for Boxing Day on Monday. That's awesome. And to mark the 25th Hobart, for those who may not have heard, Brad is marking his 25th this year, which is a milestone in itself, but a record that will never be beaten for someone of your age. 
I mean, 18 I was, is now the first year people that's can say. Right. So yeah. I was quite lucky to start in 1992 at the age of 16. Yeah. Darren Dagsy Sinogal started at 14, but um, Dags has missed a few years in the Slacker. interim. So, Slacker. And then, so he actually beats me by about three weeks to be the youngest, yeah. full stop. So it's been a pretty good race over the last 25 <laughs> years between Dags and a I. A race in itself. Yeah, a race in itself. But Dags and I are still pretty good mates, and we've done a lot of miles together. Yeah, and so congratulations to Dagsy two years ago for yeah, yeah. never being able to be beaten on the youngest. But you'll but, take the 25th. Um, yeah, I'll take the 25th consequently. <laughs> yeah, <it's sick. laughs> And then, unfortunately, the young ones in 1999 had to start at 18. So yeah. it's just our blessing, really. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's a good amazing. Thing. An amazing experience. I know your dad, Dave, you know, obviously... He was a sailor as well, and is that what got you into it? My dad's yeah. a sailor too, that's how I got yeah, into it. Yeah, I did so. my first three Hobarts with Dad's mm. Army, as I call yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and um, they're all now old boys sailing around <laughs> on the Sydney 60, and they go to Hobart on the JBW, the radio relay, every year, and it's just been in the family, and so after, um, oh, I think I was about 12 and I wanted to start doing the race, and I just badgered him and badgered him, and then finally he said, yep, righto, that's awesome. when you're 16, you're on. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, I, um, I'm actually doing my 25th race with Black Joe, who's on board oh. Perpetual Loyal, and he was on board my first Hobart as oh, well. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, so um, it's pretty funny because Black's the oldest person on Perpetual Loyal, and I've done the most amount of Hobart. So, oh, my yeah. gosh, that's yeah, incredible. Brothers bonding together on that one. Yeah, yeah, mm. well, congratulations to you, and it's so nice to see someone who's so passionate for the the sport and yeah, the race, thanks, you know? Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. The Rolex Sydney Hobart's been a part of my life, so it's nice to put back to the race as yeah. well. And being on the archive committee at the CYC, I get random questions. Uh, it's forever in my thoughts anyway, yeah. throughout the whole year, really. Yeah, mm. um, I, it's a big one for me too, though I haven't done 25 of them. This is only my fifth reporting, so well, I'll try and catch up day. with you. I yeah. definitely want yeah, to do it one day, though I, one day. I don't think I'll ever beat your record. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> you just need to become a celebrity on the Perpetual Law. <laughs> You'll be you right. Yeah. Next year, it'll be great. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, okay. well, good luck to you, Mania. Thank you. And congrats. Um, thanks. I don't know whether you stayed up here. Yeah. Uh, all that safety gear and then pretty much the, the accommodation space. Yeah. Which is where a lot of guys were trapped on the boat. That was Rambler and it didn't uh, fit. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So we have a lot of conversations about how to escape the boat. Then we have our spare air. Yeah. Around the whole boat for that purpose. Yeah. And then working back in the vessel. Yeah. Our engine room, which the engine runs 24/7. Yep. And uh, one of our guys, crew Ty Oxley, looks after all that stuff. Cool. And my department, which is the tool room. Hello, tools. Uh, with hydraulic department. Mhm. Mm and then back into Tom Addison, Belly's world, Tony Mutter, and the. Yeah. Oh wow. Control room. You. A bit of Foo Fighters was playing down here. <laughs> we weren't expecting awesome. the belly on board until they get turned off. Oh wow, that's so and cool. Step back into the boat, we have all of our water storage. Yep. Our primary anchor, hydraulic oil, spare main sheet, spare main aid, sour repair kit, and we're going over. Perfect. Yeah. And the little back hatch too. The little back hatch. Just it doesn't get used that often when it's rough, but yeah, uh, yeah could Tom be useful. Got a radio too, a small one. Yeah, uh, yeah, copy. So, uh, yeah, he'll just sit down here if he needs to communicate. We'll just talk on comms. Yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's so compartmentalised. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah the water, yeah. Ballast. water ballast tanks. Water ballast tanks. Thanks, Will. Yeah. Vital part of the yachts. Yeah. Powerful us. So awesome. These water bars really kind of, as well as helping us keep upright, they help keep the bow out of the water. When yeah. We're really sending it. For sure. So we had a training session the other day and we got up to 32 knots without water ballast. So yeah, we're looking forward to the downwind sections. Far out. You guys are going to smoke. Yeah, we hope so. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a quick one, I think. Yeah. Um, awesome. In red shirt, a little dusting. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got the, the measure. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, cool. Thanks so much for having me, guys. No worries. Amazing.
Yeah, if I went around the corner, I'll just stick the camera around the corner, but it looks, that's so silly. Looks like a, wow. It's all locked off, like, it's basically, it's like a bigger mocker, like all the compartments. Yeah. That's the bow, guys. We don't have anything forward of here. Yeah, yeah. It's just all empty. Yep. Wow. Awesome. And the priorities, the kettles. The kettles. <laughs> Peter Caliga as well, standing down here pumping food and coffee and tea yeah, up to yeah. himself. That's awesome. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl on board Perpetual This is Nick Oil, Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl live from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia for your Rolex in your about 2016 pregame show brought to you by Zyke. Fantastic to be here and what a great interview with Brad Kellett. Absolutely amazing to see you know, the work that's gone into Perpetual Loyal but also the passion that Brad Kellett has for sailing. He's just someone who really loves the sport as does his family and I think um, maybe I, I saw eye to eye with him there because I, I do love my sailing as well so absolutely incredible and, and there's been a lot of other people that have loved sailing to come along on this broadcast with us even though it's been a bit rocky and a big thanks again to my supporters uh, Zyke, Harkin and B&G our champions as well as our supporters that have been on board all throughout the year Optical Solutions Australia, Pipeline Drillers, Pentaneous Sail and Yacht Motor sorry, Pantaneous Sail and Motor Yacht Insurance, as well as Growing Teams and also Boat Tech Australia. Absolutely awesome to have them on board. We are going to go to an interview now with a very, very interesting character. I loved this interview because you can see a very big cultural difference, especially when I am called the Sailor Girl and he doesn't think that girls should sail. So here we have Alexander from Russia who's sailing south on Malagai. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and I've managed to find a Russian team in this yeah. year's Rolex Sydney Hobart. Yeah. Alexander. Yeah, nice to meet you. My name is Alexander, and I am a team manager of uh, our team. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is a, a great time. Uh, we'll be here. <laughs> You're doing fantastically with your English. Yeah. Eleven. I apologize for. No, 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 no. It's just so great to see you here. Obviously, you do a yeah, lot of racing. Yeah, a lot of racing, and my passion is uh, offshore racing. Yes. Uh, of course, it's a uh, uh, Rolex, uh, Rolex Serie yes. uh, Cup. Yeah, yes. six hundred miles Serie. I mean, uh, fastnet race, uh, Royal Caribbean race. Uh, and in this year, I have experienced uh, uh, Rolex Sea China race. Oh wow! It's, yeah, yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, it's, uh, we have uh, six place in overall. Uh huh. It's the first time for first time is a very in good. In one year. Uh, say again. What um, do you mean? All those regattas in the one year. No, it's it's a series. We we're, we're yeah, trying. Yeah. For example, in this year, uh, three maximum four. Oh, for example, yes, next year, more, more, uh, wow. we'll try it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you understand this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I understand you. No, that is very good. Now, the boat you're sailing on, Malagai uh, Misfits? Yes. Uh, yes, our boat is uh, Sydney 46 mm -hmm. Fits, uh, Malagai, mm -hmm. uh, all names, all, I mean, it's a short name, yes. Malagai, it's a New, New Zealand uh, yes. owners. Uh, Mare owner, owner. But 11 Russians on board. Yeah, yeah, 11 Russian. Uh, we we come and uh, how can I say we mm, we come in Sydney mm -hmm. uh, seven day before yeah. uh, starts uh -huh. and training every day four five hours because we need uh, practice. Uh, practice here more yes. practice. Uh, but nice spot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a very good place. Uh, very, uh, everybody know this legend race yeah. and. No ladies in our boat. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my, I, I um, l love w women, female, and safe, safe. <laughs> but uh, I know in in Australia, it's uh, many, many uh, ladies. Sail. Uh, sail. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I first met Alexander, I, I showed him my microphone and said, "I'm, I'm Nick. They call me the Sailor Girl." And he went, God, "Like women and and you're sailing and no dangerous. It's okay. I'm not going to Hobart. I will respect, talk." Respect. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, 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 very strong and very. Yeah. It's a dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. Right. Yes. yes. Storm Bay. It's. Mm. No, for men, for example, for. It, 
dangerous races or something Gen dangerous it's my vision it's okay for ladies it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> must be it must be um russian culture australian culture uh females <laughs> <laughs> yes for australian ladies it's uh, it's a beautiful strong yeah <laughs> no, but it's great to meet you and it's this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl, live at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. Thank you so much for joining me. We're really starting to ramp things up now. They're starting to turn the music up, which means it's becoming more about the spectators and less about the yachties. And I can tell you that it's already 15 knots from the nor'east out on the harbour, and it's stronger down the coast. So we are going to be looking at a massive rip ride down that east coast of Australia, and I can't wait to see all of those boats set their spinnakers in just a short while. It is 10.48 local time, which means it's almost time for the media boat briefing. But that said, um, great to have that interview with Alexander, the Russian, and I, I think maybe I'll, I'll, I'll convince him that sailor girls are awesome in the near future. And it's been great to have so many sailor girls on our our show uh, from Adrian Carlin doing 25 Hobarts to Stacey Jackson. She was one of our first interviews, the boat captain and watch manager and crew boss for the RP66 Alive. Uh, we had Sophie <laughs> walk past just a little minute ago as well, so it was great to see her as well as two girls will be aiming to be the first team to do the Melbourne to a soccer race. So I think they're, we, we're all seeing it. There's definitely a place for females in our sport and um, I'm, I'm here to champion that, that's for sure. But moving right along, we're going to hear from our last Maxi Skipper, we have spoken to all of them thus far, Perpetual Loyals, Anthony Bell, uh, great to catch up with him as always, I believe that was not yesterday, day before. And the forecast had changed a little bit for him because it was looking like Perpetual Loyal might go gangbusters into that southerly, they do have water ballast which helps keep that nose out of the water and given that they put so much effort in, um, it's great to see them potentially have the option of finishing this race this year after two years not making it and being the first to Watson's Bay Pub. So let's hear from Anthony Bell. <laughs> I have to say that there's so many people who secretly, I think, are you know, on the perpetual loyal bandwagon just to see you guys get there. Yeah, I think it's a, um, like I said, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of, um, lot of support. Um, we've certainly earned our underdog uh, sort of tokenism. Um, but you know, in saying that too, yeah, we, um, we, we, this boat's had a lot of bad luck, so um, mm. you know, we're um, sooner or later the good luck's got to shine on us, and that's what we're hanging on to. I don't think I would rate you as an underdog, in, in any means, especially after seeing it in the past few weeks in action. It's looking good. Yeah, we're sharp on big boat race day. It's only a harbour race, but mm. um, we we walked away from that with a, a good feeling about it. We got to sail on a few different angles, and we got to go boat to boat with the other guys. So yeah, we're, we're comfortable that we're you know sort of in the mix. Yeah. Um, the conditions are going to be the thing and so um, like I said that right now has changed dramatically in the last 12 hours or 14 hours so I'm sure there's going to be a few more changes when they get stressed about it. Yeah, I'm sure that the guys on board, on board Loyal, unlike most people in the fleet, would have really loved to get that water ballast happening into 25 knots of subtly. Yeah, if we can get that, I mean as much as we can get of the, out of the south is good for us, um, we'll make some gains on that and then you know, depending on how much VMG and light air running there is versus a bit of reaching, uh, we can put that on our Christmas wish list as well. Yeah. Well, um, but that said, you've got, I mean, the boat's been overhauled in terms of structure. Yep. Yeah, yeah we have. We've um, put on a bit of a diet um, and, um, and the configurations have all changed a lot, you know, sort of with the knowledge and IP that's come from the great team of the Comanche guys. So uh, that, um, that, that puts something up our sleeve uh, for it. But um, ultimately, yeah, it's a big piece of kit. So we've got to, yeah. just got to make sure in, in those light, if things go light for us, we sink and uh, we've just got to make sure that we can get some profit out of the race, we get it. Yeah, sure, and try and nurse it around that track. But I'm sure, you, I'm sure you'll, your, your number one goal is to get there. And I think, hopefully, fingers crossed, that will happen. Yeah, look, I, I said, don't want to jinx you. No, I don't, I don't want you to jinx me either. Believe me. So, uh, yeah, it's a it's a big thing for us to try and restore that credibility. So we uh, and we learn enough about our boat and and how hard to push it. So, uh, yeah, you know, hopefully that comes into play if we need it. Yeah. So the boat's been overhauled. You've got an amazing crew on board. You know, headed headed by yourself, but then also with the likes of Tom Slingsby. Yeah. Yeah, those sorts of guys are great. Even, you know, we've got Volvo, guys that have been around the world, America's Cup guys on the boat. They, they bring a wealth of knowledge, but they really gel well into that sort of loyal setup for us, which is yeah. what we like the most. Yeah, exactly. And then also, the so we've got crew, we've got boat sails as well. We still haven't seen your biggest sails out. Nah, the A2 hasn't had a run yet. Uh, we probably could have taken it out on big boat race day, but we <laughs> took the A3 instead. Um, but um, I think we'll be seeing it, um, provided, like I said, it stays on the forecast at the start and you know, classic start and then a, a burn down the coast. I think we'll be seeing it come up uh, as soon as we turn at Zulu. So, yeah, it'll be a great shot. All the big boats will be a great shot. I mean, under Spinnaker uh, tearing down there. So, yeah, big A2 on the long prod uh, might be a show for us. So I sense a little bit.
bit of excitement of actually getting out there? Yeah, it actually is. I want to get on with the game this year. I mean, we, our preparation has been really methodical, but there's a certain point where you just want to get into it. And, um, you know, but uh, I'm so unfortunate I've got 48 hours of looking at the iPad, uh, which, um, you know, will probably ruin Christmas Day for me. <laughs> well, hey, maybe you never know what will happen. Maybe that front on the west coast of Australia will push out and we'll see a little bit more subtly for you. Yeah, we were hoping for a two-cell reach all the way to Hobart, but we're not going to get that, I don't think. But, hey, you know what? Anything could happen three days out. Dear Santa. Dear Santa, yeah. <laughs> I promise I'll be good next year. Awesome. Well, good luck, mate. Thanks, Nick. Good on you. No worries, this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl and we're definitely on the home straight for our pre-game show now but there's plenty more to happen out on the water with us being live commentating for you from 12.30 for a 1 o'clock start local time. That's UTC plus 11. So I believe it's going to be very early for the British. I think it's about 3 a.m. your time. Sorry about that, guys. And if you're still watching, you poor souls. And for the Americans, though, it should be more like 8 p.m., 10 p.m. So uh, that, that should be good. But uh, I think all of the times are on my website. If you head to www.sailorgirl hq.com you'll be able to find the link there to listen to the stream while I'm out commentating and I'm pretty sure I won't lose that stream because it's audio and everybody else will be trying to do visual that's the hardest thing is trying to get the audio and the visual to go out together when you're trying to do streaming as we again relearnt this morning so it'll be good at least to be relying on a str on a stream of, of audio only so if you want a reliable stream for the start you know where it's at bye Lisa <laughs> everybody's starting to leave it's been a great morning here at the Rolex Sydney Hobart 2016 start. We're going to go into our last pre-recorded interview. There's been a stack of them. This one's with a team that I've sort of followed around the world this year. It's Varuna 6, and I was lucky enough to talk to Vasco. This boat is a rocket ship. I did say earlier that it's one of the hottest in the fleet, both literally and figuratively, <laughs> along with Chinese Whisper with a black deck, but it is a weapon. Uh, did the Rolex Middle Sea Race last year. It also did the Pacific Cup this year. And if things go right, they could do very, very well. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. It's Christmas Day. The sun is setting. It's almost time to lead right in to Boxing Day and the start of the Rolex Sydney Hobart. I've got Vasco with me from Varuna. The German team representing, how's everything going with your camp? Yeah, everything good. We finished everything basically yesterday, yeah. packed up the container today and we are ready to go. Ready to go with yeah. full German efficiency? Yes, <laughs> always. <laughs> always. Now you guys got here, most of the crew got here on Monday yeah. last week, so yeah. basically a week from the day. Yeah. Has there been enough preparation time for you guys? Yeah, yeah. We had a couple of guys uh, before the crew arrived, some uh, external guys and some guys from the team getting the boat ready because the boat came from Hawaii yeah. and um, just reassembling the boat, servicing everything, getting it ready for the race and doing some modifications we basically planned after Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And yeah, since the crew is here, we've done a couple of days on the harbour putting all the sails up and normal procedure, yeah. There's almost not enough room for you on the harbour, I think. She's a bit of a rocket ship. She needs a bit longer distances to stretch her legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, <clears throat> we went out the heads every day and then in the harbour we just did the smaller things which uh, don't give too much power to the boat to be able to escape from the ferries and everybody, yeah. yeah. But she is a beautiful looking boat. For those who haven't seen her, here's a few little shots of Varuna where she's actually based over at Sydney City Marine and she just looks like a weapon. Like I think um, she, she'd, be, she'd be useful in war times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a pretty, has a lot of sharp edges yeah. and yeah. But she's good looking and, and she's definitely going to go fast too because 54 feet, is that correct? 56. 56. I yeah. always get that incorrect. 56 feet long, but you've done a massive year as well. You mentioned you were in Hawaii, you did the Caribbean 600, you've done the Pacific Cup. It's been a massive year for your guys. Yeah, yeah, we've been traveling a lot. So we launched the boat uh, last year mm -hmm. and after that we did um, Saint-Tropez, mm -hmm. a middle sea race, and then we shipped the boat to the Caribbean the Caribbean circuit and then straight to the US and then from the US to here so we had quite a tight time schedule because transport takes always a long time and after Hawaii during the Hawaii race we hit something and we had a big D lamb like the outer skin basically peeled off because of the water pressure oh, wow. so 
that added another week for the boat builders and it's just always something when you're traveling. Yeah, I yeah. think it's always something when you're doing yacht racing, just in general, but yeah, then yeah, when yeah. you add traveling, it just adds more yeah, onto your plate. Yeah, yeah, it gets exactly. worse. Yeah. yeah, well, it's so great to see you guys here and it's lovely that you've added Australia to the tour. Have you all loved being here? Oh, yeah, we have, we're escaping the European <laughs> winter, basically, you know, so not feeling too festive uh, over the Christmas days. Yeah. It's not cold enough for us, but, uh, yeah, it's been a good time over here. Yeah. It, it feels like Christmas for us because we're getting ready for a yacht race, but it also doesn't feel like Christmas for us because we're getting ready for a yacht race. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's basically the same for us, you know, the families at home, they are, it's cold and everybody has time off and into the Christmas preparation and everything and over here we're just yeah living the racing life no? now Get, getting up early and yeah yeah it's good though because you, you you literally li live breathe sleep well you don't sleep that much when you're getting ready to go but you do all of that stuff ready ready to prep now the inside word is with the Varuna camp that you guys have uh, got a betting pot going for when you're going to arrive so my last question for you Vasco is what time do you think Varuna is going to make it to Hobart I've been pretty optimistic so my time is inside the existing record <laughs> and um, 28, uh, 722, Excellent. but uh, I th might have been a bit too optimistic, yeah, we'll see how that goes, it's yeah, uh, $10 yeah. each in the pot, so. Yeah. That's, a, that's a big haul, I think, for the Varuna team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll see, yeah. It'll buy the next round, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, lovely to see you, good luck. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, no, I know there's a lot of people that'll be watching from Germany and elsewhere that have been fans of the Varuna program, so it's really nice to chat to you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Excellent. No see worries. you in Hobart. Yeah. Yes, I will! <laughs> <laughs> this is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl, live from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, but not for much longer. That is that I'll be live from here on the ground. I'm just about to head out on the water so I can be bringing you... Woo! There goes the start boat. All of the action from the start. It will be kicking off at 1300 hours and I'll be live from 1230 talking you right in. And it's going to be great because we've had so many interviews here today. Plenty of back knowledge. I'll be able to talk you right through what's happening and keep you posted, which will be fantastic. I have to say a big thanks to everybody that's tuned in and been patient with us this morning. We will do our best to get up a, a, a more clean copy especially from the first half of the broadcast where we did have a few issues with our stream but regardless we've been very very privileged to talk to some fantastic sailors of, and members of our sport today which has been awesome a big big thanks to Zyke for bringing this broadcast to you and make sure you go to www.sailorgirlhq.com check out the Rolex Sydney Hobart coverage page and the competition it's going to be in Incredible. Now, if you weren't listening at the start of the broadcast, you'll, you'll see a little bit more about it once you read up on it. But the code word for today was trouble, given that we had so many issues in that live stream this morning. So the code word for today is trouble. You need to collect two more and do a few other things, which you'll see on the web page there. And you could be in the draw to win an aerosol jacket in your choice of colour and size. It's worth 450 bucks, guys, as well as a wet backpack, which is behind me. You know what, a, a, sorry, a dry backpack. I always call them wet backpacks, but that's probably because I never do them up. And <laughs> But no, we do have a dry backpack. That will be second prize. Third prize, a pair of ZKG shoes. All up, we're looking at about $1,000 worth of prizes. I do have a bunch of hats as well that I'll be giving away to the keenest followers of our coverage brought to you by Zyke for the entirety of the role at Sydney Hobart from start to finish. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me today. Thanks to our champions, B&G and Harkin Australia. It's been fantastic to have you along for the ride. A big thanks as well to our supporters who have been incredible. Now, I know that you've probably seen Harkin and B&G flickered throughout some of these interviews as well. There's some great shots online that I took while I was on board for Dayless and also while I was on board Perpetual Loyal with plenty of scenery. So make sure you check those out. Thanks to our supporters as well. Optical Solutions Australia, Pantaneous Sale and Motor Yacht Insurance. Growing Teams, Boat Tech Australia and Pipeline Drillers. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support this year. Thank you very, very much for joining the adventures and coming along for the ride. Make sure you check out that competition and make sure you stay tuned for the start. Come 1 o'clock, you can find all of the links at www.sailorgirlhq.com or your favourite sailing news website. That's all from me. Thanks to everyone from behind the scenes and uh, we'll catch you very, very soon.